Greetings. The Cal's Context of White Supremacy, Gus T. Renegade, and Justice uh, in to share constructive information on racism, white supremacy, what it is, and how it works. Um, real happy to be doing a late show. Uh, I don't often get to do these because I'm on the West Coast, and uh, pretty much by 6 p.m. West Coast time, it's late uh, on the East Coast, and a lot of the guests uh, have been from the East Coast. So uh, very rare that I get to do a late program. I'm a night owl. Uh, I'm pleased as punch to be here uh, doing a late night show. The cows, uh, if you can't tune in live, uh, you can enjoy the archives. Um, our guest for uh, today's program, uh, I found out about, I was, I found out about uh, today's guest from checking out a blog uh, from a non-white person, victim of racism, uh, from the United Kingdom. Uh, he was blogging about racism, and he was talking about the blind side, and he put the video up, and uh, I just, <laughs> I found it hilarious. Um, I could not stop laughing. Um, I sent it to friends. Uh, I did a show uh, and just, you know, played it three, four times, talked about it, uh, really felt it was uh, incredibly witty um, and pretty pretty insightful about racism, white supremacy. Um, found out that the performer not only uh, did this song but also had uh, an incredible blog um, with uh, just tons of uh, – Again, very witty insight uh, about racism, white supremacy. Um, I just, I could not stop laughing, and I was uh, trying to track this person down immediately. Uh, I was able to find her, and uh, she was willing to come hang out and chat with us. Uh, we might even get a live performance. Uh, super excited, uh, our guest for today's program, uh, the Oreo Experience. Um, are you uh, with us? I am with you. Groovy. Thank you so much for spending some of your uh, time with us uh, on a uh, Tuesday evening. Um, can you share, I guess, with the audience, folks who, who maybe have not heard White People to the Rescue, name of the song. Oh, yeah, i got to give you the name. White People to the Rescue. That was the song uh, that I saw uh, on the blog, United Kingdom, uh, and <laughs> White People to the Rescue. If, for the people who haven't seen the song, who have not checked out your blog, The Oreo Experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell, us, tell us some information about who you are. About who I am? Um, well, the, the blog name is, is pretty accurate, The Oreo Experience. I um, um, am a person of color-ish um, who is uh, spent a lot of time um, enjoying things like Renaissance fairs and the Pizaner Stallions and David Bowie. And that doesn't fit with, like, what I'm supposed to do. And so I decided to just embrace it, basically. And the Oreo experience is um, my, my little trials and tribulations getting through the world as a, as a, as a proud little Oreo. As a proud Oreo. Can, what, Oreo. can you share? Uh, because on your blog you have uh, a definition for what you mean when you say Oreo, because I know some of our listeners are not familiar with that term. So can you, yeah. can you explain what you mean when you say Oreo? Yes. Let me give you uh, – it's actually defined – Webster's actually did us the favor of defining it. And uh, let me see if I can pull up the actual dictionary definition here one moment. All right. In the dictionary, Oreo, slang, disparaging, and offensive, a black person who is regarded as having adopted the attitudes, values, and behavior thought to be characteristics of middle-class white society, often at the expense of his or her own heritage. Basically, black on the outside, white on the inside. Oreo. Wow. But now wow. Oreo has come out with a bunch of new cookies, which actually make it really more difficult to define. Like there's golden <laughs> Oreos, and there's like Oreos with peanut butter in the middle, and that kind of screws up the whole imagery. But I think, I think you get what I mean. I I got you. So <laughs> black on the outside, white on the inside for the I guess stereotypical Oreo. Um hmm. and and I'm just looking at the definition from your blog. Uh regarded as having adopted the attitudes, values, and behavior thought to be characteristic of middle class white society. Yes. Huh. Mm-hmm. And would you say that's accurate for, for yourself? Huh. 
Well, I legitimately do like Renaissance fairs and Dickens fairs and opera and uh, things like this, which people are often surprised, uh, pleasantly surprised, I might add, surprised when I find out that like I like these things, like Charles Bukowski and Edward Albee, and and so I just decided to roll with it instead of fighting it. I embraced it, rolled with it. Huh. Mm-hmm. Wow, very interesting. I'm, I'm eager to get to. Uh, <laughs> more of your blog and just more of your perspectives. Um, you said you already said you are a, a non-white person. I believe you said person of color-ish. Is that, is that exactly. accurate? Okay. Yes. Non-white person. And uh, this program, The Cow's Context of White Supremacy, I have uh, unfortunately concluded that we are in a global system of racism, white supremacy. And the definition I use is a global system of people who classify themselves as white and are dedicated to abusing and or subjugating everyone in the known universe whom they classify as not white. Uh, do you think such a system exists, and do you think that's an accurate definition? Um, I think that, well, I, I think that people are, I think that people are more, uh, more of a more of a gradient, that, yeah, there are certainly people who, who really hate everybody else. And I think there are people who um, don't actively hate anybody or don't, aren't actively trying to do anything in particular, um, but are part of, um, I don't want to say not a machine, not a system, but part of, part of a, my culture isn't quite the right word either, but part of a system, for lack of a better word, that um, does perpetuate things like stereotypes. And I think that some people get caught up in that, not intentionally, they're just sort of, they're born and here they are and there it is. That's what I think. Hmm. Okay. Um, just want to be clear. Um, Very I, long I pause. Say, <laughs> I had to think. <laughs> um, I encourage think that's I'll, I'll I'll share that with the listeners. That's one thing I would highly encourage in discussions of racism. Uh, make an effort to slow the conversation down, and one way you can do that is to pause before you respond. Mm. Uh, that's also a good tip because that will help you to calm down, not be <laughs> as upset, and it can even I, give you time if you are upset to calm yourself and think about what you want to say. So that's one tip I can share. Uh, Slow the conversation down, and you can do that by pausing before answering. I paused because I was thinking um, about mm -hmm. your response, and uh, I just wanted to be clear. Um, yes. Yeah. Not talking about hating uh, anyone, uh, just talking about okay. a global system to maintain white people dominating non-white people worldwide. Do you think there's a system in place that produces that result worldwide? I think that there are. I feel like there are things that um, do help to perpetuate situations, but I don't necessarily think they are malicious things. I think that um, th there are some systems that exist, and I can speak to some of those more uh, specifically. But um, but I think I don't. I don't think it's all. I don't think it's that cognizant. I think. Hmm. Very interesting. I again didn't didn't say cognizant. Uh, just the system. I saying the system of racism, white supremacy, a global system uh, by people who classify themselves as white, uh, who are dedicated to abusing and or subjugating everyone in the known universe whom they classify as not white. Um, well, I think that's a little different. Um, go ahead. What, I think that's what I'm, what I'm hearing is the dedicated to abusing and subjugating is mm -hmm. I, that sounds like there is, um, uh, to me, when I hear that, that sounds like there is um, like a very specific intent and a, an agenda, which I think some people have and I think some people don't have. Hmm. Either way, okay. as the Oreo experience, uh, I say just play into it, right? Play into it, and you're good. Wow. I'm, 
I want to pitch my uh, co-host Justin. She's here and she wants to ask some questions. But that when we uh, when I, it's my turn to ask questions, that will be my next question. Uh, this will be the first time I'm telegraphing a question. You said, "Ooh, play in thank you." Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm having fun. This is our late night. Yeah. Show. The first time I've been able to do a scheduled late night broadcast uh, with a guest uh, and the Oreo experience. I was. Uh, thrilled, and to maybe get a live performance of white people to the rescue. So I'm telegraphing a question. What do you mean when you say playing into it? That, But I want to pause and give my co-host justice. Uh, she's all of 10, and she's interested in learning about racism. So she uh, will be on to ask you some questions now, hopefully. Um, okay. Oh, i gotta, I got to open the mic up. I'm slacking in my duties. Um, okay, we got you. Justice, if you're there with your questions, go right ahead. I don't want to do any more. I don't want to do uh, questions right this second. Thank you. Oh, okay. So we'll come back to you in a moment. Uh, perhaps you'll have a question or two. Um, so you already got the question that's on the table then. What do you mean uh, by playing into it, it uh, ostensibly the system of racism, white supremacy? You get all kinds of privileges if you don't up the stereotype. People think you're way cooler, which is awesome. Um, for example, if I say, you know, I really like Langston Hughes, people are like, of course you do. But when I'm like, you know what, I sure do love Charles Bukowski, people are like, wait, what? You are special and different. And that feels better. That's way better. Hmm. I'm saying play, play to what you know that people think, what you know will probably be thinking, surprise them, and then you get like uh, you get all kinds of like um, like fun privileges. Ooh, like this story, which I know is probably going to be like an, an issue for not like a, a bad issue, but something that you'll want to talk more about. Um, I was living in a small town, and um, I was uh, of color, and everyone like I was working in this in this uh, it was a photo lab actually, and everyone was like very like huh, like kind of like. I'm uh, like not sure what to think, and I had a boyfriend at the time, and I was talking about my boyfriend and a boyfriend. And then, but you know, I was still couldn't figure out what to do with me. And my boyfriend showed up, and he was um, not of color, and everyone like totally relaxed, and they liked me so much better. And that's great to be liked. Who doesn't want to be liked? Huh? Who who liked you better because you had a white boyfriend? All my coworkers, because obviously I was way safer <laughs> since I was you know, not dating in the race, obviously I was way safer, and then they could open up to me, and we were all friends after that. Would not have happened if I had dated, you know, just a regular black person. Whoa, wait a minute. Can I, I just want to make sure I get that clearly. You feel that your co your white coworkers would have thought of you as being a less safe person to be around if you had a black boyfriend? Is that is that accurate? In this particular town, most definitely. And it's not even less safe, certainly less interesting. Like, I was less way more interesting. Yeah. Like, I, I was way more interesting once they figured out that, like, oh, she's she's friendly. She's a friendly look. Look at her with her blue-eyed boyfriend. That's way safer. And I was to them. Way safer. Wow. I don't want to make waves. I want to make friends. Hmm. Hmm. And you feel like it's easier to make friends with white people if you're in a sexual relationship with white with a with a white person. He and I never engaged. That particular boyfriend and I never engaged in a sexual relationship. Never ever. Okay. okay. If you're, if you're were, so-called it, dating a it, white person, it, I I was at, I was dating him. Yes, it was a romantic relationship. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Very interesting. Very interesting. Um, I guess, can you, can you talk about, I guess, your, your background in terms of, like, growing up? Did you grow up around a lot of black people? Did you grow up around white people? Um, what was your, what was your upbringing like? Well, I grew up in, uh, well, I grew up very, like, very solidly middle class. Like, we, um, had, like, a nice house, but not a crazy nice house. The subdivision was called Breckenridge, and that was next to a subdivision called The Lakes. And that was next to a subdivision called Buckingham Estates. So we were like, we were on the way up. But it was like, you know, we took vacations once a year and things like that. Like very, you know, we had nice things, but not extravagant things. And there happened to be no other people of color in my neighborhood. I think it was like a Latino family. And that was about it. Um, 
I went to a magnet school, um, an academic magnet school, into which you had to be tested. And for the first two years of that, I was the only, um, not the only person of color. Like there were um, a lot of Latino kids and some um, Asian people and Indian people, but no other uh, black students for the first two years I was in that school. And the, when I was around um, other people of color, was my parents took me to church on the other side of town, the other side of the, literally, I'm making quotes, because literally you had to cross train tracks to get there, it was the other side of the track. Mm -hmm. And that church was, it was older and in a predominantly black neighborhood, and those kids did not like me at all. So that was my experience. And they, um, uh, I think I got bullied the most there, so again, I could have fought back, but I didn't. I embraced it. They were like, why do you like opera? You can't like opera because you're black. And I was like, but I do. And they're like, but you can't. And I was like, you know what I do? I'm going to embrace this. I'm going to embrace. And they kept telling me, like, you're so white, so white. And finally I said, you know what? Maybe I am. And I gave myself a big hug on the inside and just mm -hmm. ran. Is that what it means to be white, to listen to opera music? I mean, I, I thought, you know. I am telling you what other people told me. I just like uh -huh. what I like. So as my oh, argument okay. to them was like, oh, this is what I like. And they said, you can't like that because you're black. And I said, but I do like that. And they said, you can't because you're black. And I was like, well, maybe I'm, I don't know, maybe I'm not really black. Maybe black is a state of mind. I don't really know. But um, the older that we got, the more harassment that I got. And uh, so I, I fought back the only way I knew how with, with sarcasm and satire and uh, embraced it. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, you said you would you would go uh, you would cross the tracks to go yes. to a non-white church. Did you have any other contact with non-white people other than I guess you know this this uh, outing to church? Um, my parents Your and parents. Um, once fourth grade came around. Once fourth grade happened, there was another black student in my in my program, and so I knew him, but we never became friends. Never became friends. Okay. Yeah, we wow. never became friends. So, you, so I guess most of your friends, close friends, associates, uh, people that you've dated um, have been white people for most of your life. Is that accurate? That is very accurate, yes. Very accurate. Okay. Um, have you experienced racism? Like, have you felt you've been uh, mistreated because you're not white? Well, maybe. No. I just, you know... Nate, look, Nate, but there's, here's, here's a story. So I was, I was at a game night recently. Mm -hmm. I'm saying is I take responsibility for the things that happened to me. So mm -hmm. I was at a game night, and we were playing, uh, we were playing categories. Are you familiar with the game? Uh, I am, but I suspect some of our listeners might not be. So if you could explain that, that would be helpful. That, I think so, categories might be a stereotypical white game. I could be incorrect, <laughs> but I think that's a game was, that maybe more white people play. I could be incorrect, though. I was playing it at a wine tasting, so it was a pretty Anglo-Saxon affair. Okay, um, okay. Uh, so categories, here's how it works. You have a 26-sided die, die, one dice, die, and... Um, every side has a letter of the alphabet. You also have a list of categories. So you'll have like a pet name, a city, and um, a job, an occupation. And whatever letter the um, die lands on, you have to fill in those categories with the word that starts with that letter. So if you had a pet name and a city and an occupation and you um, landed on L, you would say pet name, lovey, uh, and a <laughs> a city name, Lowell, Texas, and um, an occupation, a lion tamer. And so that's the address. That's how the game goes. And I was there with my, with my uh, compatriots for the evening, and the letter was in, and one of the categories was things you are afraid of. And so we went through this, uh, the list, and everyone, you know, finished, and we were going through the answers. And my friend turned to me, and he said, you know, if you weren't here, what at least one person would have written there. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I have made everyone uncomfortable. They cannot express themselves fully, and I felt like it was my fault. I felt like I failed as an Oreo to prove to them that I was super comfortable with whatever. Um, 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 all all I that is to say that 
take responsibility for putting people in a situation where they feel like they might have to draw conclusions based on what I look like. Hmm. I just I wanted to make sure folks didn't didn't miss that you were at the game night and playing categories. Um, yes. N was the word, or excuse me, N was the letter, and letter, yes. the category was things. I paying attention to words. We want to go real slow. Things that scare you. I hope everybody can. This is like I'm, I'm pulling out my highlighter, bold face print. Things. Oh that scare you, and a white person turns to the Oreo experience and says, you know, if you weren't here, someone would have said nigger. Well, he didn't say that. He didn't say it. He he intimated that that might be what they said, but he didn't say (laughs) that. He didn't articulate the word. Uh, okay, but but you were you you did not have any ambiguity about the fact that he was conveying. If you had not been there, someone would have written "nigger." Is that correct? That word, or maybe um, the uh, the other word that is appearing on the census that seems a little bit antiquated. But you know, whatever makes Negro. people comfortable. Yeah. Negro, Negro. One of, I either of those words possibly could have been filled in. It's just a joke. I mean, they just would have been joking around. They had they invited me over, so obviously they're fine people. Not racist. That, well, I I think it's all good fun. I mean, just a joke. <laughs> Who can't take a joke? Come on. Wow, wow. Uh, our job to make white people comfortable. I hope everybody caught that. Our job to make white people comfortable. Well, I think it's I believe- everyone's. I think it's only fair if you're going to go out in the world to like. You know, make people feel comfortable with you. Like, you don't want to upset the apple guard, or I don't need to the phrase, but it should be, because oh, it's a darling that it's not spreading. Um, we don't want to yeah. upset the white people. Is that accurate? You don't want to upset the apple guard. Apples are red. Hmm. Except on the edge, they're, they're white. They're white. Um, <laughs> the Oreo experience. Justice, Gus T. Renegade on the cows. I believe Justice has questions. Um, (laughs) She is, uh, I'm acting crazy because this is one of the few times, very few times, that Justice and Gus T. Renegade are actually in the same uh, building doing a program. So, um, I would like to actually see her. Excuse me? (laughs) Did you think she was 10? Yes, ma'am, I did. That's very impressive. Also, that she is up is very late. That's also impressive. She's a trooper. She is, you know, dedicated to replacing white supremacy with justice as soon as possible. And if that means bedtime is a later, little later, so be it. Justice, if you have questions, go right ahead. How can the system of white supremacy be stopped? With task, isn't it? Um, why, why replace things like Dickens Fairs? They're delightful. You know what I'm saying? Maybe, maybe we should all just. What's wrong with enjoying, you know, the fruits that life has to offer? I am answering your question with a question. I'll just go on with the next question. What do you do when you are around white people who practice racism and white supremacy? Well, uh, when I'm around white people in general, I first relax because clearly that's going to be a safer environment. Um, Probably pop in like some David Bowie and just kind of like chill out and talk about things. You know, just sort of foster like a, 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 you know, a, a space to communicate. Let everyone just air their grievances out there. Who isn't brought together by a little Ziggy Stardust and thing? What do you mean by privilege? Because you were saying uh, privilege earlier. So what do you mean by privilege? Privilege and... Um, can you remind me? Like the the the. Can you remind me, just so I have it in the right context? Mm-hmm. 
You were talking about uh privilege. Uh, I don't remember when, but it was uh earlier. Hmm. Can we take a pass and come back to that one? Just because I, I, I want to answer your question, and I'm totally blanking on what it was that I said. So I apologize for that. Okay. That will be all for now. Okay. Justice, Gusty Renegade, the cows, and the Oreo experience. Um, I'm just curious, do you do you feel like uh, people being mistreated because they're not white, do you feel like that's a serious problem and that we should be doing all we can to solve that problem? Well, I think that, I mean, look, here's, here's the thing. Uh, the club that I frequent, you can't just come in there acting any kind of way. I mean, it's nothing personal, but you have to be, you know, you have to, you have to do what you have to do to get through that rhyme. That was fantastic. You know, so you, if what you are doing is causing someone to be uncomfortable and causing them to treat you badly, then you might want to just check in with yourself and, um, and, and see what you can do. Yeah. Wow. But wait, wait, wait a minute. The, the question <laughs> the question. <laughs> I'm having to work a little bit because – I'm enjoying, right, just being, I think if anybody, I think if Tim Wise was here, I would probably be enjoying myself just because it's late and I'm a night person and I don't get to do late shows. So I'm already real pleased just to be doing the show and it's late. Um, <laughs> but I'm having to work real hard to make sure that the questions get answered. I feel like I'm talking to a white person sometimes. <laughs> Maybe that's a compliment. Maybe that's a, as an Oreo, you might appreciate this. I feel like I'm talking to a white person because I'm having to work real hard to I make sure it. that question gets answered. So is, is that a compliment to, to know that uh, it, it feels like I'm talking to a white person when I speak with you? That I have, I have taken, I have worked on my elocution and um, vernacular for years. Um, in fact, if you go to the oreoexperience.com, you can even find a list of words that Oreos like to use because it just makes the sound better in conversation. Scintillating. I got that in the description for the Lating. program. Isn't that a great say it with me? Scintillating. <laughs> Scintillating. Like, Wait a minute. But you didn't answer my question. See, I feel like I'm talking to a white person. See, that's why you really can't be having too much fun when you talk about racism and white supremacy because it's real easy to get sidetracked. But, now, the question what? was... Wait, no, I have one question. Was, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is important. The question was, oh. people will, they'll get mad at, they won't get mad at you. They'll get mad at me for not being disciplined on the show. So the question was, uh, do you think people being mistreated because they're not white is a serious problem and that we should all be doing as much as we can to correct that problem? Uh, what I think that if someone is being mistreated, then clearly they're doing something wrong. You don't get, you don't get treated badly when you're doing something right. You get treated badly when you're doing something wrong. So if someone's getting treated badly, I feel that then maybe they just should, um, you know, take a minute, take a minute, read, you know, something inspirational, and uh, and then check themselves. You know. Can you recommend uh, some inspirational reading for victims of racism, white supremacy? Um, let's see. Well, there's a fantastic book by a British writer. Uh, called Tiber Fisher. It's called The Thought Gang. It's all about philosophy, and it will take you through all kinds of philosophy. If you're feeling like, like you know, like all like angsty and worked up, like work it out. Read some Lolita. I mean, that's exciting and sexy. Like that will that will clear your mind. You know what I'm saying? Um, those good books. If you want, if you just need to like drain yourself, pick up some Dickens. You got to pay it by the word. So you know, you get you get like it just like in, you just get it's. It's great. Can I ask you my question now? Ask, yes, please. Ask your question. So you said a minute ago that you thought you were talking to a white person and you were laughing and having fun. So see, I win. How, what, what do you mean you win? What do you win? I win. You said that you felt you were talking to a white person and you were laughing mm -hmm. and you were having a good time. So I'm on the right track, obviously. You weren't crying. You were enjoying yourself. Oh, I'm having so, a ball. I normally, I well, I can't say I normally have a good time on the show. That's not true. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I did say, I did say 
that even if Tim Wise was on this show, if Tim Wise would agree to do a show with me at 10.30 p.m. Pacific time, <laughs> I'm not going to say I'd be having this much fun, but I'd be in a pretty jovial mood because I'm a night person. I think better at night. Um, this is my – man, I would be having a blast with Tim Wise on the show at 10.30 at night. So maybe we can work and get that – make that happen. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I am having a good time, but uh, I enjoy talking to white people when I get constructive information <laughs> about racism. So, um yeah, I, I don't have a problem talking to white. I normally have white people on the show. You are an anomaly, even as uh, a self-described Oreo. You are an anomaly somewhat on the cows. I normally have white people here to talk about racism. Just like in my life, where I'm normally the, the, one of the lone black people, I'm again one of the lone black people. Thank you. Oh, it helps. It just fits in with my, my MO. It makes me feel good. If you have, like, all of the like, black people, you know, then I just feel like a regular black person. That's not exciting. But uh, I'm, 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 glad, <laughs> I'm glad I could help. I said I was going to take call this early. Everybody who called in, you're lucky because I never go to the phone lines this early. Uh, I can actually ask since I'm looking at her justice. Do you have questions you want to ask or do you want me to go to the phone line? What is the purpose for your website? Oh, my gosh. Uh, that is an excellent question. Well, number one, advice. I mean, the life of an Oreo is one of discipline, and it's a lot of hard work, like being a monk or like a serial killer, like whatever. Like these things require discipline and learning and time. So instruction. It is a place uh, for Oreos to call home because, you know, because of, of what it takes to be an Oreo, we can't really approach each other in public because when a bunch of black people are seen hanging out together, that's awkward. So we can't really approach each other in public. So it's a place where we can go and find each other and get support. Um, and it's just, you know, a way to sort of share, you know, the trials and tribulations of this uh, oh-so-American experience. Hopefully some people will get some enjoyment out of it as well. Do you think you can uh, slow down the talking? Like, um, oh, sure. I'm sorry. I, I, get, I do get fast. talking fast when I get excited. Sorry. That's okay. No need to apologize. Well, thank you. That'll be all for now. Okay. I look forward to more. <laughs> That's Thomas's line. That'll be all for now. That's the line. Infamous justice put her imprint on the cow. That'll be all. <laughs> Delightful. Um, isn't she all-star, all-star? But Tim Wise, my goodness, Tim Wise on Thursday, Justice, Gus T. Renegade, and Tim Wise. I didn't even put a description on the show. That should, just, that should be enough to get people here. Um, hopefully we will set new records for calls and listeners, live listeners for the program with Tim Wise Thursday. Um, Yes, I'm going to go to the phone lines early, um, having having fun today. Um, that that was if you if you could slow down as you speak, that would help because I'm yeah. I'm trying to pay attention to catch every word from the Oreo experience. Um, 404. That's Atlanta. She is up at two o'clock in the morning listening to the cows. I love it. 404. Do you have a question for uh, the Oreo experience? Hey, yeah, I am up. Uh pretty early in the morning. Um, I was excited about the show, um, Oreo Experience. I visited your blog, and it, you you have a great sense of humor. It's very fun to read. It's, I laughed a lot reading it. Thank um, you. Yeah. Um, okay, I do have a few questions. Um, okay, you, you said that being a regular black person was boring. Um, I just wanted to know, have you studied your history, like African history, like even the Webster's Dictionary de definition said that an Oreo um, adopts middle-class white society's culture at an expense to their own heritage at times? I thought that well, was I mean, I, I, I'm I, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Sorry. No, go ahead. That, that's the question. Okay. Well, I mean, I... History. Well, I went to public school, so I feel like my, if my teachers wanted me to know more about my history than, like, slavery in the 1960s, then they would have told me. So I got that. <laughs> wow, yeah, no, and you're right, too. Um, public school in the United States does give you a Eurocentric view of history. Um, 
Like, Europe is so cool. I mean, have you seen cathedrals? You don't get stuff like that in Africa. Pyramids are simple, but a cathedral, that's like a flying buttress? Who doesn't love a flying buttress? Yeah, wow. Okay, so, okay, one thing I want to say, um, I, I, I'm, I'm really enjoying this program and really enjoying hearing you speak. I see so much of myself in you um, because I, I, was, I had a similar experience. I grew up as an Oreo, too, um, but what really kind of opened my eyes to a lot of things was I visited Africa, and I stayed in Ghana for two months. And, um, and you we made it back? Wow. Yeah, you I made it back. Yeah, I made it back safely, and I loved wow. it there. It was, it was a beautiful experience, but then at the same time, too, like one thing that was obvious that I didn't have to read was, okay, so you know that we were slaves here, but the thing, like, not only did they bring us here and, and do us like they did, they went back to our, our home and then colonized it and kind of, de like, destroyed the place economically and in a lot of different ways, and... I don't know what I'm trying to tell you, but your history is actually pretty deep. It goes back millions, at least a million years. We've been here a million years where Caucasians have only been here 10,000 years, and I would like to encourage you to kind of study our history because this whole white supremacy thing is only a few thousand years old, and we, we did have empires and civilizations, and I'm not as impressed with cathedrals and European history as I am with my own. Okay, and then you said people who are mistreated – who it must be their fault. I thought that was kind of insensitive because we have Native Americans who are still having their land confiscated by the government and still be given a, being given a pretty raw deal by the government. And just non-white people are being abused around the world. And it's, it's usually not their fault. So I guess that's not really a question. Okay, and then I wanted to know how old are you? Oh, goodness. Um, I am, let's see, without dating myself too much, um, I've, you know, been around a little bit of time. A lady never tells her age. Okay. That's what all oh, the girls yeah. at the club say. A lady never tells her age. Okay, well, you don't have to divulge anything that you don't want to divulge. So, okay, yeah, more power to you, sister, you know, but... Um, and definitely I understand how, um, t truly, too, you might want to research um, white supremacy because it is a global system. There is a reason why white countries have all the resources and all the money and why non-white countries are suffering because there's enough on the earth to feed everyone. You might want to study that and study your history. And <laughs> that's, that's all right. Kinda, okay. Duly noted. Thank you. <laughs> duly, nicely duly noted. Um, thank you, 404, uh, calling in. 404, uh, please see if you can jingle the show with Tim Wise on Thursday. That will be 7.30 p.m. Uh, Atlanta time if you have the opportunity. Ring for the Tim Wise show. If you have the opportunity, you should call back this program because this is uh, – this is going to be a real interesting program. If you can, if you can, I don't know how how late you're going to hang uh, in Atlanta, but uh, you might want to hang tight and and ask some more questions this show because this is going to be very interesting. Um, I'm going to check one 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 and see if you have some questions. If not, I have some more. Uh, someone called in at one one one. Did you have a question? Uh, the Oreo experience. Person that called in at one one one. Are you just listening? I assume they're listening. Um, I wanted to ask, um, <laughs> you have a post on your blog, Why Self-Load? Oh, can my gosh, share, why not? Can you share uh, some of, of the things that you uh, wrote about in that particular post? Well, the main thing is that, look, all of us have things that we um, – all of us have, hold on one second, I just want to pull it up in front of me so I can reference it properly. But all of us have things about ourselves that we don't, um, that's that we appreciate. That's why we have, we have whole industries dedicated to that. If people didn't kind of hate themselves a little bit, we wouldn't have like makeup or deodorant or toothpaste or marriage. So, you know, it's just part of the culture. 
uh, self-loathing. It's, it's part of being American. It's, it's a right. And you just, you basically, I mean, you remember being a kid. And when you're a kid, all you want to do is fit in. And we say that goes away as we become adults, but it really doesn't. That's why we, like, go shopping for nice clothes and, like, get our hair done and stuff. And, uh, yeah, knowing that, that other people may be bothered or put off by you is just step one to making them not so bothered or put off by you. Definitely. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I, de- I got to make sure I get in um, the blind side. You wrote about that on your blog. And, I did. Uh, that uh, what an important song. Yeah, I'm so, can you say that you said an important movie? What an important film. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Kudos to you, Sandy, for, you know, doing that. Eesh. Sandra Bullock, you mean? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. What did she do exactly that is, you know, no Well, I mean, she movie. bravely made a film that discussed just an important, um, you know, societal lesson that um, – we, as of color, need a lot of help. And um, if it were not true, we wouldn't keep seeing movies about this. So it's obviously something that we really need to, like, understand and, like, get. You know what I'm saying? And she, like, she had the guts to do it, is what I'm saying. She had the guts to dye her hair blonde and adopt an accent and subjugate that giant boy. I mean, that kid was so big. He could have gotten mm. angry and, like, hit her, and she would have just been she's a tiny lady. She could have just been destroyed, but she, she stood up to him in the film. She stood up to, you know, thugs in the inner city. She walked up to them, right up to them, and t- gave them what for. And that's, I mean, that takes guts. It does. That takes guts. Wow. Wow. You, uh, wow. Sandra Bullock, it takes guts to uh, play that role <laughs> in the blind side. Yeah. Did you... I'm Sandra Bullock. Yes. Hmm. A lot of uh, a lot of people have, I guess, expressed a view. I know Cree wrote an incredible blog post. Uh, Cree, counter racist, evolving engineer. She did a blog post on the blind side, and she pointed out a lot of aspects of how uh, very old and consistent images and themes of racism, white supremacy are blatant in that film. Very paternalistic, uh, you know, the, the oafish black person, a.k.a. King Kong, uh, is domesticated, tamed by white people. You didn't, uh, you didn't feel like any of those elements were present. Well, I mean, if that's the case, who else is going to do it? I mean, who else? <laughs> we've, we've seen in movies and TV have showed us that black people can't do it themselves. So, come on. Like, who else is going to do it but a tiny white lady? Huh. Huh. I mean, did you hear her accent? If you, if you had been him, wouldn't you have been moved by that, that southern drawl and just drawn into her world with its fancy sheets, couches? Fancy sheets. Wow. <laughs> uh, if I was confused, I'm certain it would have been pretty easy if I was a non-white person and in a tough predicament. Uh, <laughs> white people can be a source of rescue in the system of white supremacy. I, I think that is uh, on display in uh, the area of the world known as Haiti and uh, many other places around the globe that uh, white people are the folks you go to when you need help. Um, right? And when you need the big money, <laughs> that's where you go. Ah, that's where you go. <laughs> Um, are, are, are we uh, are we fortunate enough to uh, to get a uh, musical performance of uh, white people to the rescue? Is that is that in the realm can. of possibility? Is it is it possible to have just one quick second um, where I can confer you can have with my? Uh, second. Okay. Um, so you, um, I'll be I'll be right uh, I'll be here I'll be right I'll be right back. Is that okay? okay. That's Brilliant. Excellent. All right. Excellent context of white supremacy, Gusty Renegade, Justice, um, first live performance on the cows, excited, um, busy week, Tim Wise, Thursday, 
7.30 p.m. Eastern. This is like uh, the folly before serious business Thursday, 7.30. Actually, this isn't even a folly. You, <laughs> you all don't know what I know. That's one thing I can say for uh, one of the shows that I've done. You don't know what I know. Um, Tim Watt, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 p.m. Pacific uh, this Thursday. Uh, we'll be right back <laughs> on Friday with uh, Dr. Harry Davidson. Uh, early show. Um, It'll be uh, 12 noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Um, and we have, I believe, three shows next week. Dr. Francis Cresswell, and she'll be back next weekend. Um, yeah, very busy. Subscribe to the cows. Join the Facebook group. It's linked on the show page. And um, the blog, racism-notes.blogspot.com. Tim Wise, Thursday on the cows. Part two, the cows and Tim Wise should be... Uh, scintillating conversation. Uh, Oreo Are you an Oreo word? <laughs> I read the blog. I read the blog. I do my own work. You're learning. Um. <laughs> All right. So I'm, I'm ready whenever you are ready. Um, Ken, you can have more time to warm up if Justice wants to ask a few questions and then we can get the song. Would that work? That's fine. Whenever. 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 Love it. Never. Uh, I'm accommodating. That's, that's my whole Oreo. That we're we're very accommodating people, Oreos. <laughs> <laughs> I dig it. I dig it. I like accommodating folks. Um, justice, rock and roll. What do you like about your website? Oh my gosh! What's not like about my website? I like that it, it that I finally have a place to. There's no, there's no haven for Oreos right now. I mean, sure, we'll run into each other at a Civic Light Opera event or see each other, like, across the way at Medea. That's the opera, not the Tyler Perry monstrosity. Um, but there's not really a place where we can really talk about these things. And uh, I love that, I, that I've given people like myself an outlet and a place to express themselves and be heard. Also, it is a great place to pick up quiche recipes and hair straightening tips. Is your Oreo experience constructive? Oh, most definitely, because um, on the journey toward, you know, um, whiteness, it's a long road. It's a lot of work. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you think, like, am I doing the right thing? And uh, and then come Christmas time when you're at the the office party and everyone is like so happy, so happy to have you there, just just you, but to have you there, you feel like yeah, this is totally totally worth it. And um, having a place where you can get the strength that you need to carry on is is definitely constructive. I have one more question. About the Oreo experience, does the Oreo experience help non-white people? Of course it does. Um, of course it does because, like I said, who doesn't want to fit in? And so if you're, like, sitting there and you're like, golly, why do I keep getting turned down for these jobs? Or why do they all look at me funny when I walk into this theater or this basketball arena? You can find things to say like um, that, that make it easier to, to make yourself accepted if you are interested, I just wrote a post recently about um, some ways if, you, if you're interested in, in dating an Oreo, some things that are helpful to say, um, even if you are of color. So, um, yeah, definitely very, very helpful. Okay, uh, that will be all. Thank you. That will be all. Uh, are we going to get our uh, musical performance? Yeah, yeah. We uh Jeff, can you still hear me when I do this? We can hear you. You can hear me? Okay. I just yep. making sure. All right. Then uh are are you ready for it? We are ready. The Oreo experience live performance, white people to the rescue. A poor black person meets a white person and suddenly their life is better. A poor black person meets a white person and now they can get their shit together. One people to the rescue. What would we do without you? You make all our dreams come true. 
white people to the rescue. And it isn't just the blind side that dares to discuss this incredibly important social motif. Um, there are just, I just want to take a second to give a thank you to just a handful of films who also had the guts and the bravery to show us what the blind side did. So a big Oreo experience thank you, but that's a Finding Forrester, Dangerous Minds, The Gridiron Gang, The Ron Lark Story, O, oh, Hardball, Freedom Riders, Bring It On, Blackboard Jungle, Bring It On, Two Through Six, Step Up, Pride, Step Up to the Streets, Wildcats, Take the Lead, The Green Mile, Finding the Odds, The Marilyn Gambrell Story, and Transformers 2, because even in a near apocalyptic robotic future, the black robots still can't read. Four black boys are really good at sports, but only when a white coach tells them. Four black boys would just do what's the story till a white coach comes along to help them. White people to the rescue. What would we do without you? You make all our dreams come true. White people to the rescue. Whether we want to dance or sing or simply just survive, we only need some white people and we will truly thrive. Four black glasses would fail all the classes till a white teacher stopped to teach them. Four black glasses would just shake and pump their asses till a white teacher tried to reach them. Four black orphans would live off their endorphins. Hmm. Not much else rhymes with orphans. White people to the rescue. What would we do without you? You make all our dreams come true. White people to the rescue. White people to the rescue. What would we do without you? You make all our dreams come true. White people to the rescue. Thanks, you guys. Context of white supremacy, Gusty Renegade Justice, and the Oreo Experience. First live performance on the context of white supremacy. Um, you were inspired to do that piece by The Blind Side and the other uh, log of films that you lifted off? There's just a couple of other movies, but yeah. Just a couple. <laughs> Just a couple others. Okay. Okay. Wow. What what uh, has the feedback been to that piece? Like uh, I, I found it on the web. It's gotten to at least the United Kingdom. What what feedback have you gotten about that song so far? Um, I think people have really enjoyed it. I've I've um I've had a lot of great feedback on the blog. People really like it. They think that it is um funny and enjoyable and it's catchy. You're going to be singing that chorus tomorrow. I promise. <laughs> It's, this is, I think, the uh, fourth time that the song has played on the program. Um, so, you know, I've, I've already been caught uh, by uh, white people to the rescue. And uh, I was even instrumental in assisting in getting it played in a class at a major university. They watched the video and everything. So uh, I didn't even uh, know yeah. that. Fantastic. Wait. I'm on the street team. I'm on the street team for uh, the Oreo experience and white people to the rescue. Um, Can I ask one quick are, question? Certainly. Was it an HBCU? <laughs> um, it was a predominantly white institution. That should cherry Goodness. on okay. top. Okay, good. <laughs> that yeah. should be the cherry Great. on top. Predominantly white institution. Okay. Thank you for respecting my <laughs> boundaries. I, I, I strongly suspect I would have had a much more difficult time getting that song played in an HBCU, um, and I actually think that that's a problem. Um, mm. Mm. That's that'll be my pull for a commercial break, and we'll come back with that right there on the commercial uh, side. And uh, this real interesting show, context of white supremacy. Quick commercial. We'll be right back. The Oreo experience uh yeah we'll be right back is racism hurting you on issues of race are you unable to speak think and act with clarity and confidence are you tired of laughing when nothing is funny smiling when you are not happy agreeing when you really disagree
EncounterRacism.com, you can learn specific strategies and techniques to counter the behaviors of the people who practice racism in all areas of activity. Using words correctly, following counter-racist logic, even counter-racist science projects designed to reveal what racism is, how it works, and how to counter it. The open source code writing format allows you to pick and choose from a variety of counter-racist suggestions so you can produce the code that works for you. Stop by counterracism.com today and help replace racism with justice. That's counter-racism.com. Welcome to the desert of the real. Peace, family. This is your brother, Hollow, a.k.a. Mr. Holipsis, a.k.a. the Buzz Killer. Tune in to Holipsism's Haven every Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where we discuss the social, economic, and political issues of the day with a common-sense approach, an African-centered perspective, and a universal sensibility. Call in number 347-843-4874. That's 347-843-4874. To check out related YouTube videos, blogs, and show archives, visit www.holipsism.com. That's www.holipsism.com. I'm making it hard to get your Negro on. Hotep, Black Power. There's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there like a splinter in your mind, driving you mad. Context of white supremacy, gusty renegade, and justice. Uh, <laughs> this is, uh, I've had lots of fun, uh, this program. I hope people listening in have had fun, too. Uh, just being courageous with the program, regardless of uh, what people have to say. I supported a non-white artist. I had fun. I think uh, other people listening to the program had some fun, and I think we might have done everything, and I think we got constructive information about racism, white supremacy, touching all bases with the program uh, for once on the cows. Uh, Our guest for today's program, uh, we actually planned for her to do what she does uh, in terms of exhibiting her art. Um, we were going to do that for the first portion and then have, uh, I guess, her out of character and just being real, the real Oreo experience, uh, Oreo writer, uh, for the second half of the show. Uh, and I thought that would be super interesting. Um, and I ended by saying I think it would be much more difficult to get your song, uh, White People to the Rescue, played at an HBCU. Uh, and I think that's true. Uh, I think it would be much more difficult for me to get that song played at a class. I could be incorrect, but I think it would be much tougher, and I think the reception would be a lot different. Uh, <laughs> the real, not the character, the real. How do you feel about that statement? Do you think your your brand of humor, your brand of entertainment, which I think is incredibly accurate about racism and white supremacy, and I, I mean, I, I even want to go back over some of the things that you said, but incredibly accurate understanding of racism, white supremacy, but how do you think that would be perceived at an HBCU? Um, I don't. I honestly don't know. I, I've never performed anything in front of a predominantly black audience, and the, the of, I, have, I have one friend who I think worries about me um, a little bit, but the, the, so far, the, the, the black people who have listened to it, or who have, who have seen it, or read it, are but they, they, they've enjoyed it. I've gotten a lot of great feedback from them. They tend to be very similar to me in kind of like background and whatnot. So I think there's just a lot of like, um, you know, I'll, this is an experience that I, oh, a lot of us deal with. And so um, I think there's a lot of that recognition that happens. But I don't, I don't know. I have a friend actually who teaches at an HBCU, and I've, I've never really said, told her directly that I'm like, I want to play it for your kids, but I've never told her that directly. <laughs> You should ask. I, I would be curious to hear uh, hear how they receive it. Um, the non-white people that I've shared it with, they um, thought it was hilarious. They got the humor immediately, requested uh, a signed CD immediately. Um, 
But the non-white people that I know who appreciated it, uh, appreciated the song and your blog, the Oreo experience dot com, uh, they are informed about racism, white supremacy, or at minimum, I'll say they are less confused about white supremacy. I strongly suspect that a lot of non-white people who are maybe a little more confused about racism might not get the humor and the <laughs> accuracy. I, I want to make sure that I hammer that home. Accuracy. It, it is kind of funny and a joke, but, I mean, you look at Haiti right now. Ugly. I watched some of the video footage today. Ugly. White uh -huh. people are the ones going in to solve that problem or to further create more problems, whatever. The people who are making decisions down there are white people, and I feel like a lot of black people, that's why I was thinking with the HBCU, might not, I think they might have a more difficult time receiving that truth and being honest about that, and I could be incorrect. I'm making a flat statement. I could be wrong. Um, I want to pitch to justice because I didn't tell her that you were going to be acting oh. for the first part of the show, so she just got, you know, the live experience. <laughs> so I'm going to see if she uh, has questions she would like to ask. Justice, do you have some questions? No, but um, I was going to say what Gus was talking about. Um, I think it was, um, what were you talking about? When, I, it was about the Oreo experience, or oh yeah, uh, Haiti. Um, it's like white people were coming to the rescue, and so I just kind of thought that that kind of went with the Oreo experience. But no, I do not have any questions right now. Okay. Uh, the Oreo writer, the Oreo experience, she actually did do a blog post uh, about Haiti. Um, that's actually one of your more uh, more recent posts. Is that correct? Yes, yes it is. Okay. Yeah. Um, I actually, I, I that that was not uh, no fooling, no fooling. I did get the uh, white people to the rescue video. I was able to help in getting that played uh, at a class at a predominantly white institution. Uh, happened today. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was talking with the professor for the class afterwards, and I said, um, and it was well received in the class. I think people caught the humor. Um, but I said, uh, it, it could be a really ugly and frightening montage to change the video clips to make it scenes from Rwanda, Haiti, mm -hmm. Katrina, and play that song. And it would still be true. It would be haunt all of the humor would be gone because it would be frighteningly accurate in the system of white supremacy and you see this playing out on 60 minutes every day um what are your thoughts about that well it's um that's those images are one of the things that was like kind of, i don't know if confusing about but i guess um that were significant when i was like growing up because you watch the news and the first half of the news is Generally, like fairly positive stories, um, and then the second half of the news is like people of color like doing all kinds of bad things, or yes, being saved by white people, which is hard because it's not inherent. It doesn't make it inherently bad. Like I have friends who have you know gone to places and third world places and and done some great work there, and I've I've been with them sometimes, but it is a very striking image of like oh and like or. Are you making parallels between me and them? No, okay, good. Just checking. It's a, <laughs> it's a very, it's a very specific image, and it's one that I don't that, like I said, I have friends who have gone and done some amazing work for people. It's an unfortunate image because it happens. When I see like their pictures, and I'm like, oh, that's so. Uh, why are there? Oh, hmm. You know, it does make you think. Mm, it, I, uh, it does. I, I wish it made more of us think. Apparently, it doesn't because uh, we, uh, and I'm saying non-white people, myself included, we uh, continue to watch these images and uh, don't seem enough of us don't seem motivated to replace white supremacy with justice. Um, I asked before. I'm, I'm 
repitching question, so I'll ask again now that the act has ended. Uh, <laughs> Um, but we're still having scintillating conversation. Scintillating, um, thank you. Do you think people being mistreated because they are not white is a serious problem, dominant problem on the planet, and that everyone should be doing as much as they can to correct that problem? Um, I will be honest in saying that in terms of like my what I know about global things, I don't know as much about them as I do about more specific localized things. And I and and I my answer is a version of what I said. Not not at all a version of what I said before. I, I'm sorry. It's it's a version of an answer I had to a different question. Um do I think it's a serious problem? The simple answer is yes, but that's a very complicated situation. And I don't think that a lot of I don't think that a lot of stuff is done consciously or maliciously, I think some systems have been set up and they're just going. And I think that people are caught up in them on both sides. And nobody really knows what to do in a way that's going to be equitable for, you know, everyone or as equitable as possible for everyone. Hmm. So you feel like... uh... give Give you an example. Um... I did some work with an organization called Community Coalition in, in South Los Angeles, and it's a it's a it's a nonprofit that works to you know change laws that that keep you know bad things happening basically. And I'm probably going to get some of these very particulars maybe slightly off by a year or two, but bear with me. So South LA, predominantly Black and Latino areas, horrible schools. These are schools where kids don't have books or don't have air conditioning, or don't have working restrooms. They're awful. The schools in area... Are white people? Yeah, it's mostly uh, blacks and Latinos in this neighborhood, yes. Okay. In this neighborhood. These are terrible schools, which is, this is a story that we've heard a bunch of times. Um, schools are funded with... I'm crossing my fingers on getting all this right because I was... I remember it left a big impression on me. Schools funded with property taxes. South LA, in South LA, there are some very large institutions, for example, like USC. Because of a law that was passed back in the 70s, USC is not paying current property taxes, but they are a huge property holder. If USC were to pay current property taxes, the schools in that area would have money to take care of their kids. Now, the people who just, like, like say the professor who just got a job at USC, has nothing to do with what happened in the 70s at the school where he works, where he or she works. So it's kind of hard to be like, hey, professor, I know you just got your job. I know you're trying to feed your family, but we're going to raise the school's property taxes like tens and tens fold, which means you're going to get paid less, which means your family is going to suffer. Okay, thanks, bye. Like that's not fair either. And so I think like there are things like that. Like I see a lot of things like that that are just like going that may have been started perhaps more maliciously at one time, but they're just going. And like what do you do about that? Hmm. (laughs) <laughs> Would it be accurate that you have decided the thing to do about that is to create the Oreo experience? <laughs> so, well, that is one of the things that, I, that I, I would like to, like, I'm a comedy writer. That's what I moved to Los Angeles to do. But I do hope that I can, yes, shed some light and information on things. Because, like, the, I didn't, the only reason I even know anything about that is because I happened to get a job at this organization that happened to be doing that work. And that takes some time and effort to even figure out in the first place. So if I can deliver some of this information to people, that would be great. And I, mm-hmm. I have a I have a particular interest in in the way that people are portrayed in television and film because I remember being a kid and um, I'm going to date myself a little bit. I will not tell you how old I am, but suffice to say, that in the late 90s, I was watching television, and that actually wasn't that long ago. In the mid-90s, actually, more accurate, in the mid-90s, I was watching television. And at the time, the WB had shows like Dawson's Creek and Young Americans on the air. I loved these shows. I thought they were, they were intense, and they were, like, intelligent, and PC was really cute, and they talked about, like, things that other shows weren't talking about, and they were edgy. Then, like, the next night, the WB had all their shows with black people on them, and they were 
very traditional sitcom style, but very, like, lowbrow and, like, they didn't want to talk about things that were, that I thought were important. They weren't talking about, like, issues. It was just joke, 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 joke. And, you know, a lot of, like, I'm ethnic, so I'm going to talk like this. And I just didn't relate to that at all. I remember thinking, like, why are there no black people on Dawson's Creek? Because I totally relate to those characters, and why don't any of them look like me? So I'm, I'm particularly, that's something I, I would guess would say I would hope to be able to do with the Oreo experience, because that's something that I, I <laughs> lament about all the time. Hmm. Like I'm, uh, post- I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. Sorry, one more post story. There's a, a post I did recently when I went to the movies. I went to the movies on Christmas, and I saw the Sherlock Holmes. And okay, Sherlock Holmes, like a big American, like mainstream blockbuster movie. So very important to front load that movie with trailers that are going to appeal to the most number of people possible. And in those trailers, um, white people got to do all kinds of things. They got to be in love with their spouse and have kids who were adorable. And they got to save the town from the witch. And they got to be sorcerers. And they got to be superheroes. And Tracy Morgan is in a movie right now. And that was the black person. And I was like, what? No. Like, but why can't black people have a quirky romantic adventure like Tina Fey and Steve Carell? Not okay. And it made me, I, I blogged about it recently. Um, so that's, that's one of the things that I hope to people take note of, I suppose. <laughs> wow. Um, I do want to point out, I still kind of, kind of, feel like I'm talking to a white person. Um, <laughs> I wanted to make sure the question uh, gets answered. Oh, wait, are you saying that white people avoid answers to questions? Is that what you're saying? Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. You said that you still feel like you're talking to a white person. Yes, ma'am. And then you said, I want to make sure the question gets answered. So what I'm inferring is that you're saying that white people don't answer questions. Is that what yes, you're saying? Yes. What? They have a consistent habit. Well, let me let me put this in context. All of my friends All answer questions. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I would love to have some of your friends call the show because it has been my observation, and I have a lot of evidence now because we're about to hit our one-year anniversary. White people have a tendency that I suspect is a conscious act of racism to what? not answer Wait a minute. To not answer questions about racism. This is consistent. Uh, it plays out every, well, I won't say every program, but it plays out consistently where they don't answer questions about racism. And I guarantee you, even the white people that you say are your friends, if you become very serious and focused about speaking accurately about racism, people that you call some of your closest friends will start to do the exact same thing. Well, let me back this up a second. What question would you like? I spend a lot of time with white people. I always speak for them. What question would you like to have answered about racism? Oh, I have a bunch of That's why I have a two-hour show. I have a lot okay. of questions. This isn't a one-question thing. This is, I got a page of questions I might want to ask. Well, I might need, uh, I'm sorry. And I will serve as liaison and answer it. Oh no, um, I, I won't talk to the white person directly. That that can be real confusing. Uh, I don't, I don't, I want to be able to talk to the white. Look them in the eyes if I can. At minimum, I'd rather talk to them directly. Uh, white people are real slick with uh, communicating, miscommunicating, and communicating. So, I uh, yeah, I won't talk to white people directly. What? Um, I'm sorry. I I just kept repeating the word "what" over and over again. I was formulating my a rebuttal, and it didn't formulate. Oh. <laughs> Wait, I want pause. I'm hitting the pause button to highlight. Defending white people. I just did a show. Oh, I wouldn't look. Wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. We got, I want to slow this down. And I'm still enjoying, and it's still scintillating. I told you I was going to touch all bases. This is going to be funny, informative, yeah, and today. great conversation. I'm sorry. I said, see how much fun scintillating is to say. <laughs> I just want to point. 
all seriousness. Um, number one, you don't say words because they sound cool. You want to use the best words possible that are going to work in your favor to get the results you want. Real important for victims because we kind of enjoy uh, just using words to be cute, and uh, that's not cool. Um, but the point I wanted to underline, you said you were preparing your rebuttal to my statement that yeah. white people, even the white people that you are really close with, yeah. They would change how they treat you. They would most likely not answer your questions accurately and concisely if you start to speak with them honestly about racism, white supremacy. I guarantee this will happen amongst a significant number of the white people that you call friends and that white people are skilled at communicating and miscommunicating where they purposely are not giving you accurate information or answering your questions in a constructive manner. Much credit. And you said, have wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is important. You said, I'm preparing my rebuttal. This is another observation from okay, my yeah. friend. You have something I want to say. No, I'm going I'm to let you go. I'm going to hush. Give me 30 seconds and I'll be done. I'll wrap. This is just important. But yeah. uh, Non-white people who are engaged in sexual intercourse with white people tend to be <laughs> very defensive of white people. Oh, 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 is that what it is? Either it's true. It's just, it's not a judgment. It's not a judgment. And I, I want to make sure I get this in, too. I would be doing exactly what you're doing. That's why I find the blog fascinating. That's why I love the song. And she's cute. No beef at all. No beef at all. I would be doing exactly what you're doing. I've said multiple times, if I didn't know what to do about racism, didn't think this problem could be solved. It, you said yourself, it's complicated. When I thought this was complicated, I said I would get with a white person. Even now I said that I would retire. I would get with a white person. I would chill out. I would try and get around as many white people as possible and just be safe. That is the logical thing to do if white supremacy is going to ride. That's the logical thing to do. That's why I think your blog is incredible. It's funny because so much of it is accurate. And logical, you said you feel safer. White people perceive you as being a safer person to be around if you're with a white person, not a black person. Now, that was said in jest, ostensibly. That was said in jest, but it's funny because it's true. It's funny because it's true. That's the joke. Well, that particular situation, your story, and that you did did actually happen. And I remember saying it really clearly. I thought it was really super strange. Um, but that's strange. That's what you should expect. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Um, where where was I going to start? Okay. A. I um, I'm pausing to think. Mhm. Mhm. You were preparing your rebuttal. Preparing my rebuttal. I think I think one of the 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 things that happens, and I I had this one conversation with this. Uh, white person for a long time and I was really impressed with both of us because what happens when you talk about racism with with people who aren't uh, of color is like mo like like honestly like who has the time to be like, how am I gonna bring down a minority today? Like no one has that kind of time. Except for a handful of like you nasty time. Your average person with all of my friends with a very few exception, all of my friends are like struggling just as much as I am, and like we're all in you know the trenches right now together. And I, I, I'm sure they're not at home thinking like, wait a minute, Adria got that one thing. How am I going to take it from her? I'm wait a free. minute. Wait a minute. This is important. Wait a minute before we defend white I, people too much. Talk must. about how tough they got it because this, this is common too. Um, you said yourself, white people have told you instances where they would have practiced. That was a true story. Highlight that. The categories incident in things. Yeah. Highlight, highlight. Remember things, not people, things that scare you. And they said, or they let you know it would have been nigger or negro. You have people that are around you who apparently practice racism. And I think that's another capital. thing. Is like I don't I define, I know that. It's hard to say, well, I define a word this way, now I define it that way, but I, I don't think that any negative thought about a person of color is racist. I think, it's, I think it's crappy, but when I think racism, it's like, nope, I am going to, I am making an effort to go and oppress you. And I don't think that, like, I don't feel oppressed by a crappy joke. I'm like, that's not clever, or that one's actually clever, nicely done. 
but I don't think that, and like, I don't think that I don't think people have that kind of time or like energy. Like, obviously, there are a few people, some people who are who are hate filled, but like, um, it's I can't look at my other friends who like also are totally struggling right now and like the economy and blah blah blah, and not feel for them simply because they their parents were able to eat and drink wherever they wanted to and mine couldn't. Like, now, like, when you're, like, in it, like, my, like, it's, it's like, yeah, that, there is that and that stuff happens and it's awful, but I'm looking at my friend in the eye and she doesn't know how to pay her bills next month. And that's got, at this point, nothing to do with race. It's like, oh, I understand how you feel. And I, she's not looking, she's not like, I can't pay my bills, so I'm going to make sure you can't either. It's just like, we all can't pay our bills. So like, what I think happens when we're talking about... <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no, you're good. Uh, the Oreo experience context of white supremacy. Uh, justice, do you have some questions you would like to ask? I like justice. Do you think... Do you, like, uh, do you, think you can be a little bit more uh, serious and not, like, uh, joke around? If you don't no. Like. That's a very good question. I will do my best. I, um, I, my jokes are very serious, but um, I, will, I will do my best. <laughs> and then... Um, Did you all hear that? I'm sorry for interrupting. Did you all hear that? My jokes are very. Did you hear that? Like, very serious. I apologize, Justice. I'm sorry, Justice. I'm I'm hushing. I'm sorry. Do you have any non-white friends? Yes. Yes. If you if you do, do they know about racism, white supremacy? I'm sure that they do. We. Uh, I'm trying to think how much we actually talk about it. I know they know about my blog. Um, yeah, totally. Yes, they, well, it's come up, I'm sure. Do they say it uh, di- um, indirectly or uh, directly? Do they talk about it directly or indirectly? Mm-hmm. Um, no, we've talked about it. Um, we have talked about, you know, I mean, Obviously, like, if you do grow up of color, stuff happens, and we've talked about it, and, you know, you have that conversation every now and then. And you also have an, a lot of my friends who are of color are like me, so we talk about this, like, weird place that we're kind of stuck in and, like, wait, what do we do? We all really like these things, but we're not supposed to, but we totally do. So we, we talk about that stuff. Okay, um, that will be all for now. I will, I will be thinking of some more questions. Thank you. I look forward to them. I want to hit the phone lines before I ask uh, some more questions because uh, it's late and the folks have stayed up late. I want to make sure they ask uh, 404 hanging in in Atlanta. Oh, thank you for supporting the show. Do you have uh, some questions now that you know this is, uh, well, at least the first part was an act? Uh, and uh, change up. Do you have some questions you'd like to ask? Um, not right now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one one one. Uh, caller at one one one. Did you have a question, or are you just listening? Is that me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, this is nine oh nine. It, it came up one 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 this time. Yes, sir. I have no numbers showing. It's just showing all one. So. Oh, sorry about that. You uh, good? Can you, hear, can you hear me clearly? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Uh, Miss Oreo. Yes. <laughs> um, have you ever heard that poem by um, Oscar Brown Jr.? I apologize. I don't think that I have. It's possible, but it's not ringing a bell right now. Uh, it just uh, it starts off. I apologize for being black, for all I am, plus all I lack. Please, sir, please, ma'am, give me some slack, cause I apologize. Does that ring a bell? 
No, it's not ringing a bell. Okay. The only reason I brought it up is because your song, White People to the Rescue, uh, it reminded me of that poem he did. Oh, right on. I, is, that the, is that the extent of the poem, or is there more to it? Oh, there's more to it. Um, that, though. He, let's see. He says, I apologize for being poor, for being sick and tired and sore. Since I ain't slick, don't know the score, I do apologize. I apologize because I bear resemblance most black people share. Thick lips, flat nose, and nappy hair. Yes, I apologize. I apologize for how I look, for all the lo lows and blows I took. On those, Lord knows, I closed the book as I apologize. I apologize for all I gave, for letting you make me your slave. And going to my early gr grave, yes, I apologize. I apologize for being caught, for being sold, for being bought, for being told I count for naught. Yes, I apologize. I apologize for all I've done, for all my toil out in the sun. Don't want to spoil your righteous fun, so I apologize. I apologize and curse my kind for being food, for being blind, for being rude. And in your bind, yes, I apologize. I apologize and curse my feet for being slow, for being late, because I know it's me you hate. Why not apologize? I apologize and tip my hat, because you, cause you're so rich and free and fat. And son of a bitch, that's where it's at. And I apologize. The Thank end. you. Thank you. Um, well. Thank you, uh, 909. Um, I hadn't heard that poem either. Um, I wanted to ask, and I really wanted to make this clear because I, I thoroughly enjoy the blog, uh, yeah. the Oreo Experience dot com. Uh, very witty uh, and lot of accurate information about racism, white supremacy. And uh, one of the many posts that I really enjoyed, um, yeah. you talk about Tyler Perry and me, <laughs> and you reference him as uh, uh, you, you write in your blog, you know, this is the last person anyone would label as an Oreo. They would say this is, uh, you know, the, the diametric opposite of an Oreo. And you say, you know, not so fast. Let's look at what he does. Wait a minute. You can <laughs> Can, can you t uh, share about uh, your, your post on Tyler Perry? Yes, let me uh, pull it up um, for you so I can do this. Um, one moment, please. But yeah, I spent a lot of time being like, oh, I can't stand Tyler Perry. And I was like, wait a minute. Wait one minute. Um, excuse me while I get this post up. Tyler Perry in question. So, yeah, so basically Tyler Perry makes these movies that sort of reinforce all these stereotypes, blah, blah, blah. Definitely the anti Oreo. But here is some information that may change that. Number one, Tyler Perry clearly exhibits a poor view of black people. His movies and his shows rely on trite stereotypes to find the funny. Is he writing this way because it's what, make, because it's what makes money or because it's what he believes? Hmm. Tyler Perry enjoys exploiting people of color. At his current rate of production, Tyler puts out a movie and nearly a full run of TV series a year. That means he has a slew of people working very hard so, so that he can make media junket appearances. Because he runs these black shows and because he chose to sell in Atlanta, most of his employees are of color. And for a long time, they couldn't join the union either, so they were like working um, very, very hard for not like um, WGA wages that people, folks out here were making. And then finally, Tyler Perry is intimidated by Spike Lee. And I actually have an, I don't totally remember what this was now, but um, I guess uh, Spike Lee called Tyler Perry on the carpet for his portrayal of black people. Tyler fought back, claiming that Medea is really a subversive way of instilling value in the viewers. Now, a true Oreo would invite Spike over for scones and conversation. A self-loather would take the same emotional stance and tuck tails and Spike Lee speak, hmm. like, uh, like Tyler did. So, you know, mm -hmm. those, 
his, though there's um, a diversity of opinion about the quality of his films, they, um, they don't really make you want to be black. So that kind of makes him an Oreo. Hmm. You said, wait a minute. You, you said uh, his films don't make you want to be black. It, do you feel like, uh, do you feel like that's, I'm thinking of, I might be incorrect. I'm just making flat statements, and I'll let everybody know. I lived in Atlanta. Uh, I had an application to go to North Carolina State. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, North Carolina A&T. Excuse me. North Carolina A&T, which is a historically black college. I've been to Morehouse. I've been to Spelman. I've been to Clark. Um, I strongly suspect that we yes. do not have large portions of black people at historically black colleges who say Tyler Perry films do not make me want to be black. Now, I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but... You're saying that? my experience, I think he would have a lot of fans. That's what I'm saying. My experience, I think he would have a lot of fans uh, at historically black colleges. I could be incorrect. I'm sure there are some black people there. You may not be incorrect. Yeah, I don't know. Or actually, based on my observation, I would take that bet, that he's going to have a lot more fans than detractors and people who say his films make you not want to be (laughs) black. Um, I'm, I'm not even sure I've heard too many black people say that about Tyler Perry's work, that his films make you not want to be black. Um, wow. That's why I said, and this is on the blog, the Oreo writer. That comes <laughs> on the blog. Very witty take on uh, Tyler Perry and Medea. Well, that's, um, I mean, that's my movies. I just like, I don't, I, I, know, I have, apart from like independent films or the occasional character, British films actually do a pretty good job of making black people just regular people. And I'm like, why can't Tyler make a movie where people are just like me? And, like, we just do things and we're not sassy and stuff like that. Hmm. Or Um, all of attitude and swagger where it's just like, hey, it's a more moderate film. Like, why can't we have a Did You Hear About the Morgans just with black people? I'd watch that movie. I mean, I'd watch Do You Hear About the Morgans because I've been enamored with Hugh Grant since I was a child. But Hugh Grant. I would... Uh, he paid, paid for sex with a uh, non-white prostitute. She blogged about that, too. That's on the blog, too. Or he liked writer.com. sex with me, and it was very special. Uh, context of white supremacy. 404, do you have a, a question uh, now? See your hand up, 404. Yeah, actually... Um, Okay, I was confused in the beginning um, until I heard that you were acting. So, um, are you self-loathing? Uh, no. I mean, I, I, I went through a lot of confusion when I was a kid because I was told by black people, you can't like those things. Like, that, that was very true. Everything that happens on the blog is true. Sometimes elements are heightened um, for act, but... Um, I mean, that was true. I, that's, that's what other black kids told me. You can't like these things. You have to like these things. And that was really confusing. So I didn't fit in there. And then I also recognized I didn't totally fit in, like, back in my neighborhood. And it was just really confusing. So I don't hate myself. I don't have, well, I have issues with myself, but they're not about race. Um, it, it was it, all that stuff was just born out of being really confused and being told things by people in society and and uh, and just trying to find figure out a way to express that. But I don't hate myself for being black. Okay, and then also um, there's this African proverb, "Know thyself," and um, you have kind of embraced a lot of things. I mean, the children might have had some sort of wisdom. Um, you have embraced things that are outside of your own culture. Do you think that it's possible for you to be a self-actualized, full black woman and to have knowledge of self and to embrace your melanin and know what that is and how powerful that is if you are, you know, listening to Ziggy Pop? And, you know, because, I mean, you know, too, that black people are not all, you know, Tyler Perry stereotypes. We're not, you know, ignorant. Like, you, you say you want to see different representations of us, but even in our oppressed state here in the States, you see a wide variety of our expression. There's the conscious community. There's, um, you know, soulful things and things that, you know, are 
calling back to our African ancestry, do you think that maybe you would do better to try to, you know, really, like, it might be extra work, you know, but to delve into, like, our culture in order to develop, you know, your... your sure. Um, it's, it's a weird question because... No, it's not, sorry, it's not a weird question. It's a weird situation because um, I... When I was when I was young, I tried doing the things that that I was told I was supposed to do, and I just didn't like it. I have found, and and my peer group or my my friends, we seem to rally around um, much more of like um, an economic, almost an economic identity. Um, a lot. My upbringing was so stepfordy that that's what I relate to. Is that that I mean, my home was very quiet and it was very prim and it was very proper. And we went to the theater and we went to the opera and that's what we did. And we did not talk about feelings. We did not talk about things that were difficult. And that is what I relate to so much more than you should like this because these other people look like you. So you should be really into what they're doing. I relate much more to like these people have the same experience as you. So you should be really into what they're doing. And in, in terms of, of music kind of specifically, one of the things that really shaped what happened or the way that I grew up and developed was I wasn't really, my parents were really strict and I, I could really only watch media that was, watch and consume media that was very commercial, that was accessible to get on the radio or on t in TV. And at the time, I was formulating my ideas in the early and mid-90s the commercial, like, hip-hop was really what I, or I guess commercial, like, R&B and hip-hop and, like, rap. The stuff that was e most e easily accessible was really, like, vapid to me. And the music that I gravitated toward talked about things, like, talked about things that I was interested in. The commercial, like, hip-hop and R&B and stuff that I heard was, like, it was, it was really vapid. It was, like, I want to get with you and, like, be my book and it kiss me and do me and stuff like that. And the commercial sort of alt rock and punk and ska and uh, stuff like that I can get a hold of talked about things that are really really important to me about you know, anger and loneliness and angst and abuse and things like that. And but everyone was like, no, you have to like this. So you have to like this stuff because black people are doing it. And I was like, but I, but they're not speaking to me because that's not my experience at all. And I'm not saying there's not value in in learning about things of Africa and stuff have, and I do, and I, I certainly like plenty of things that would be classified as, but I relate to experience, like life experiences that, that look like me and that feel like me it's more than I relate to people who look like me or don't look like me. That was a different answer. I'm sorry. I feel like days have passed. Yikes. I was muted. Yikes. Thank you. Uh, the other 111 uh, that called in, uh, if you have a question for uh, the Oreo experience, uh, you're on the air. Greetings, Renegade. Greetings. Greetings, Mr. 720. Thank you for hanging in late. He's calling in, I believe, Mountain Time, so it's one uh, for Mr. 720. Exactly. Um, I was just wondering, uh, I... Uh, missed a lot of the show uh, something blanked out I don't know what happened but I uh, just wanted to uh, find out about uh, you said there's a video for the uh, the song yes sir if uh, you can do one of two things you can go to the Oreo writer dot com and it is posted on her site you can check it out there oh you can do three things you can do there you can go to YouTube and you can see it on her YouTube page Oreo writer or you could look uh, on the show page for the cows and Blog Talk Radio. The program that I did uh, last week has the video there. Um, so you got three options. Her website, Oreo Writer, Oreo, Oreo Experience. I got you. <laughs> OreoExperience.com. You can go to her YouTube page, Oreo Writer. It's on YouTube page. Or you can uh, look right here at the cows. Okay. Um, and it's on the uh, show page for tonight. 
Uh, not for this program, which I maybe should have put it on this one too, but I already had it up. I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to gush that much uh, over uh, our guest. But uh, it's right below. I mean, it's, it's on the front page. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. No problem. No problem. Um, You're so nice. He uh, he pitched. Uh, thank you. He he pitched uh, about the video. Can we get your uh, your real thoughts, Blindsai? Was that uh, sorry? I didn't hear anything for about three seconds. Oh, okay. I said uh, we. He pitched about the video. He he was asking about the video for what will white people uh, white people to the rescue? Excuse me. Oh, I heard that uh, part. Could you, okay. Um, could you give us uh, the real thoughts uh, about the Blindsai? Oh, when uh, when when my my friend of mine. Uh, hi, Abaya. A friend sent me the trailer months ago, like before the movie came out. Totally thought it was a joke. I 100% thought it was a joke. He was like, "Watch this. You're you're gonna die." I completely thought the trailer was so on the nose, and I kind of couldn't believe it. And that pretty much as soon as I saw it, I burst into song. And that is the song that came out. Um, I, it's you know what? It's not the movie itself. That, it's really not the movie itself that bothers me. What bothers me is that that is one of like two images of ethnic life that we get to see in mainstream movies, and that's what bothers me about it the most. Hmm. I loved in the video that you made clips that went all the way back to Wildcats. It was awesome movie. I mean, this is a long trend of white people coming in to save the heathen, reckless, uncouth, savage Negroes and uh, to get help them uh, get their act together, uh, whether it's in athletics or in the classroom or life in general, just a long stretch of these <laughs> Um, and and books as well. I mean, this is this is uh, white people really enjoy these sort of uh, films. It seems because they just keep coming out uh, and doing very well. A lot of these films did very well. I think Freedom Writers did very well. Blindside was number one film. I think uh, Sandra Bullock got nominated for a Golden Globe. I believe she won for that. Did she win for that Blindside the Golden Globe? Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, uh, and they've done very well. So. Uh, yeah, I, I thought that was real interesting. Um, I wanted to double check to see if Justice had some uh, questions she wanted to ask. Justice, do you have a question? About the comedy you do, how yeah. how do you think it is constructive? Well, it makes people laugh, which is the main goal of comedy. And I think that it, um, I can't remember who this comic was. I really don't. I want to say it was John Leguizamo, but I could be 100% wrong about that. And I don't remember what he was talking about, which in a way makes it sound really ineffective. But I remember he started, he was just doing joke, 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 and it was great, and it was hilarious, and it was awesome. And then he flipped it, and it became so poignant and so like, oh, my gosh. And then he left the stage, and that was it. And it was great because there are things that are hard to talk about, and I think that lightening them up a little bit, no pun intended, can make things a lot easier to talk about and, and make, which goes back to a, a point I think I was trying to make earlier, is that when you're talking to people about racism, it just, it's a hard conversation because you can't, I don't think, you can blame like your average, you know, like, most of my friends, you can't blame none of them have anything to do with laws that were put into place 56 years ago. So it's really, I, I think conversations about reason tend to get very sort of judgy and like, take accountability for this right now when it's like, I'm the same age as you, so I wasn't there when any of this happened. Um, and I think comedy can, can help um, make certain conversations easier. How do you work to produce justice? Well, I have a collection of I Voted stickers, which I proudly display. Uh, no, I don't keep my I Voted stickers. They are small and easily disposable. 
Um, I don't. I I don't know. I try to make people laugh, and hopefully, then hopefully they also think while they're laughing. Thank you. That would be all for now. You are welcome. Thank you. That 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 doesn't sound like a justice to me. That doesn't sound like a justice to you? Mm-mm. It just uh, talked about, like, comedy. and uh, I, I just asked you, um, how do you work to reduce justice? There's many, many ways how you can uh, support justice. Sure. There are. Oh, comedy... So comedy is one of your ways. Yeah, I, I mean, I honestly, I think so. I've had a, I've had tons of conversations about my blog around the blog. Hopefully, it gets people talking. Hopefully, it makes yeah. You know, hopefully, it makes people notice some things and and notice the way that you know maybe they think about things or or things that they've said. Okay. Okay. Um. That'll be all. Okay. For now. Okay. <laughs> She's got a catchphrase. She has a catchphrase. Uh, the Simpsons, Bart had a catchphrase. Justice has a catchphrase. That'll be all for now. Um, I don't have a catchphrase. Cows, I guess that's that's as close as I got. Um, I guess I need to repitch this because this is important. So repitching this uh, real time now. <laughs> Do you believe that we are in a global system of racism, white supremacy, and the definition being a global uh, the definition being a global system of people who classify themselves as white and are dedicated to abusing and or subjugating everyone in the known universe whom they classify as not white? Do you think that such a system exists? Do you think that definition is accurate? I don't. I cannot fathom that there are an Illuminati of racists sitting around going, "Now, how do we do this?" And by the way, whenever I do this, I take them a handlebar mustache and I twirl it with my fingers in the air. Um, I maybe maybe there's maybe there's a, 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 a handful of folks who are sitting around just somewhere doing that, but I cannot believe that there exists such an office. Hmm. Okay. You're um, like, hey, you so much for your time. I'm sorry? <laughs> no, I was, I was laughing at your pause and your, hmm, by saying that you would say, and thank you so much for your time. Good night. Oh, no, not at all. White people... Uh, now, that's interesting. Uh, I, I was about to say, white people keep saying that, uh, but you are not a white person. <laughs> um, that's very interesting. That's very interesting. Uh, but what I was about to say was white people keep saying that. There was a white person on the program uh, this past weekend, a suspected racist uh, professor at Yale University, and he said he did not believe we're in a system of white supremacy, which is rare to have a white person come on this show and say they don't believe we're in a system of white supremacy. The overwhelming majority of white people uh, have agreed on this show that such a system does exist. Well, I'm, um, a, I'm agreeing with part wait, of your wait a minute. I'm agreeing with part wait, of your statement. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I just... Um, but yeah, he, he also thought it was time to leave because he didn't agree. Which part of the statement do you agree with? I think that there are, well, I think, yeah, I understand that, like, uh, I'm going to talk about America for a second, not the world, but, like, when slavery ended, slaveholders were in a horrible, horrible situation. Um, from their point of view, they're like, crap, we have... <laughs> I had to I had to pause because I didn't think I heard you correctly. I, was, I understand why you're laughing. I was, I'm really talking. Shook. You should put that in the show. Put that in the show. That's gold. Put that in the show. When slavery ended, the slaveholders were in a terrible position. That is no. Oh, that's the funniest thing I've ever heard in my life. Oh, I'm not saying that facetious. I'm saying that 
Um, I know yeah. you were saying you got to give it to them like that, too. Serious. Like, man, they were really in a tough time. Like, you sell it, sell it. It's got to be serious. Like, white people. I'm not saying their situation I'm saying oh, by no. I'm, sorry. I'm sorry? I'm not saying that I am with them. I'm saying that from their point of view, I'm to a different point. But I'm saying it's like, branded. There are these millions of people whose stakeholders were going to, if they were able, destroy them. So they did was logical from their point of view. They set up systems to stop them from doing that and succeeded. So and because of stuff that ha because of that, what they create. I mean, strategically, I'm not saying morally or ethically it's good. Strategically, brilliant. Again, morally and ethically reprehensible. Strategically, kind of brilliant. They set up they set up these systems that were sort of you know still undoing. So I do agree that there are systems in place that serve that were very intentionally created for one reason, and now we have like the vestiges of that. I don't again. I don't think that like I don't know. I, don't, I can't oh, again. It's not like all right. What's on my agenda today, random white governor? Well, you have lunch with uh, the governor of the uh, of the uh, nearby state, and also we have to remember to keep all the people oppressed. Like I don't think people are sitting around doing that. Again, some Klansmen, some like hardcore racist neo Nazis, sure. But like your average person, I don't think is like, hmm, how can I make sure that Jamal does not get ahead? Hmm. I don't no, I don't believe that anyone of like sane thinking is sitting around doing that sort of thing. <clears throat> okay. I need I need two minutes. I have to request two minutes to give my rebuttal. Um, because someone called and read a very long poem on the program, um, and you took a long time to give a response early. So I need two minutes. I'm going to clock myself. I uh, have a clock with the seconds and everything. So I need two minutes to give my quick rebuttal. And I'm actually going to make it two minutes and ten seconds, so I can take ten seconds to prep starting right now. <laughs> Okay. Uh, one of her other favorite, she has a favorite word list on her blog, the oreoexperience.com. One of the words in her favorite word list is avoidance, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. And uh, I spoke with, this is one of the few times I actually spoke with a guest before the program, and it didn't turn into chaos on the show. It worked out okay. Uh, but we <laughs> talked, and she said that... Uh, she had a friend who was concerned and, and thought that, you know, she really, that I guess the Oreo experience really has self-esteem issues and that she really uh, dislikes herself because she is a black person. Her friend believes that this is not just, you know, satire, that this is a reflection of some real deep-seated issues that she has. And she said, no, that's, that's crazy. I'm, I'm great about myself. Life is great. I really yeah. want to highlight here. Wait a minute. I, my two minutes. Um, I really want to highlight here. Um, I guess said she was confused. She said confused repeatedly about growing up and being confused about all of this. Mr. Mm -hmm. Neely Fuller Jr. been on the cows uh, seven times. Front of the book, if you do not understand racism, white supremacy, what it is and how it works, everything else you understand will only confuse you and she admitted that she was very confused and she also admitted she doesn't believe we're in a system of racism white That's supremacy not and this wait a minute I, my two minutes is almost up wait a minute you said you agree with the first part but and this is important you don't think white people sit around a regular average white person sits around and plans schemes no, not at all. How, to, how to mistreat you said Jamal specifically, and this is great avoidance. Highlight, I'm almost done. Highlight, you have a blog post where you acknowledge that white people do mistreat individuals who have non-white sounding names and that non-white people are even responding to this by trying to blanch their names and make them sound more acceptable to white people. So you have information that people do sit around and scheme to mistreat Jamal. No, and specifically not what I'm saying. But I, Jamal. No. You have that's information that that is true. No, that's not what I'm saying. In the context of a, what I, here's what, what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. Yeah, that that post is about job interviews and getting a job, and it's the recession, and so yes, there's this glut of. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is that post about 
white pe- excuse me, non-white people making an effort to make themselves appear less non-white on job applications through names, no, that's, uh, what that's, they're associated with. That, is that true? Yes. However, okay. it's not so Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's important. This is important. They I, I agree. Covered. This is important. You do have information that white people do sit around and mistreat individuals. Who no, that is not what I'm saying. No. Excuse me. no, listen to what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. A job interview, okay? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Especially right now where we have so many people who are looking for work, and employers can, they're in no rush because they've got any, they've got tons of applicants. In your average, like, sort of white-collar, like, corporate job interview, ex- your specific experience doesn't, it matters. But what the best interviews I've had are where I've gone in and it's just been a conversation where people feel the most just, oh, my gosh, you're like me. You're the, you're the same thing. But, and you just have a conversation about things, right? And I've gotten some fantastic jobs that way. Um, in terms of uh, if you have a very ethnic-sounding name, whatever the ethnicity is, and the study happened to be about black people, but the person is probably going to be like, it just happened to be about have... black people. It just have you ever heard of white people having ethnic? No, if you have names? like if you have like a real if you have like a super European name like what like here to guard the door again <laughs> like that be off. But what sorry to any guard the door. There. What is that? what is a super European name? Like with something like Kierkegaard von Bjornsternski, like uh-huh. something like that also be have like wait. Studies? Have you seen the studies where people are uh, having problems getting employment or other things that they need because they have super European sounding names? But also you, have on your, you have you have you have you have evidence also, on your blog. You have Gosh. evidence on your blog that non-white people are mistreated for having non-white sounding names. Do you have evidence Here's that people what I'm saying. are being... I'm saying that what I imagine the thought process is more like, oh, this person doesn't so sound like they're going to, like, oh, that I don't, I don't know anyone but that, or whatever. Like, that doesn't sound as relatable to me, which is different than saying, than saying I sure do hate black people. I sure do want to make sure no black people work here. Those are two totally different thoughts, saying, like, this person who has an extremely ethnic sounding name, I wonder if they're going to present that way. This is a very like button down organization and better for work for better or for worse, we this is a co- corporate culture here. That's a very different uh, statement than saying, "Golly, I hate this person because they're black and I don't want them to get a job." Those are two t- and I am saying I think it's more the former than it is the latter. I think it's more right. the former than the latter. Okay. I again I just wanna I wanna really <laughs> highlight that. I really wanna highlight that this is important. Uh you have spoken from the perspective of I mean that's what this is kind of all, all about speaking in a manner that is acceptable and really from the perspective of a white person. I've said that repeatedly. I feel like I'm talking to a white person and I still feel that <laughs> way. Not and I'm, I'm not saying that to be insulting, but no, but it's not fair because it's from my perspective. And you're saying it's a white person's perspective, but it's also my perspective because I have had to... Wait a minute, interview. wait a minute, wait a minute. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I did listen to you and without interrupting. Um, you are speaking from a white person's perspective. I'm speaking per- from my perspective. Wait a minute, you're still interrupting. You're still interrupting. Hang tight, hang tight. Okay. Your perspective has been precision crafted to be that of a white person. That's really the definition of Oreo that you read. And specifically, I want to highlight this because this was the funniest joke of the show that ironically wasn't a joke. You were serious. It was, it was a serious joke. You said when slavery ended, white people were in a tough position. That is speaking from the perspective of the slave master. As a non-white person, I have never in my life considered the difficulty that a white person, much less a slave owner, has because they don't have Toby anymore. I just find that incredible. And it is speaking from the perspective of the white. You've done it consistently, rationalizing the behavior of white people. And I'm just saying I think that's consistent 
particularly for non-white people who are confused about racism, white supremacy, and especially if there's sexual intercourse with a white person, it becomes huh. dramatic. Oh, the amount of course, of course. My, it's my devil white boyfriend that's poisoned my mind. Yes, it's yeah. him feeding me lies every night. You yes. have a white boyfriend? Yes. Okay. Do you talk to him about racism? Yeah. Oh. What what do you all talk about? Um, we've talked about uh, a few things. We've talked about let's see, like ex- stuff that I've been through, like experiences that I've had, and and frustrations that I feel at, like the industry. I do want to back up for one quick second and say, mm-hmm. and that's like this is something that doesn't get talked about. But um, I you know I'm a writer. I work as a writer. Women comedy writers, not really what a lot of places are looking for. So I get a lot of like, eh, maybe, because my name is female. And and I don't think that men are sitting around going like, well, I sure do hate women. I sure do want to subjugate women. It's just like, well, it's really a boy's room, this writer's room. So a woman's just not going to do it as well. Again, it's unfortunate, but I don't think it's super duper malicious. And in terms of what happened with, um, I think, uh, to understand why, uh, like Jim Crow laws were so what they were, you have to understand. Like it doesn't make any sense unless you, figure, like unless you understand why they were why why they were so important to hold on to at the time. Um, like it, it, it they it's like well why do that because you had this like I said ethically and moral, morally it's reprehensible. Tactically it's it make it makes sense tactically. It's horrible. It just makes sense tactically though that's all i'm not saying oh this boy slave holder they sure hope they didn't feel scared is not what i'm saying what i'm saying is um it makes sense tactically that's there's really no emotion tied to that statement that's just a just a fact um i i want to again point this out for the listeners uh i still feel like i'm speaking with a white person um this is what white people do consistently. It's sexism. You know, women are treated really bad. Dr. Peggy McIntosh did that a lot on the program. Uh, and, again, if we're not in a system of racism, white supremacy, you know, that would be one thing. But I have concluded that we are. And the overwhelming – I mean, you're even talking about racism all over the place on your blog. Um, I feel your entire blog is a response to racism, but I could be – uh, incorrect. I want to double check to make sure we didn't have any calls that I that I left out since we're closing closing in here. Uh, four oh four or uh, I guess Mr. Seven Two Zero. Did you all have any questions uh, you wanted to make? Your both of your 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 mics are on. Yeah. Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. Um, I'm sorry. Is it the uh, Oreo experience? Is that uh, how you refer to yourself? I'm sorry, I missed the yes. part of the show. Um, I uh, I was curious, uh, um, and I'm I'm quite confused with the whole show, being that I missed so much of it. I I am. I, it'll be fantastic. It'll be caught up. It'll be great. Yeah, I, I don't know how to make heads or tails of it. I really don't. <laughs> Um, but my, my question to you is, uh, you know, I was wondering, uh, you, 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 you have a, a white friend, you say? Yes. Yes, I do. You I, know, as, as I, I listen to you, you speak, you know, and I, and, and I do mean this in all curiosity, um, yes. your, uh, intonation, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, articulation of your words, the uh, your diction is uh, so crisp and uh, clear and quick and fast, and it does uh, come across as a, uh, for me, sounding much like white people. Um, also, uh, what am I trying to say here? Um, I, I wonder when you've been around white people, if you've ever had any of them. Uh, laugh at you and say, uh, or if you've ever caught any of them uh, maybe uh, thinking uh, that 
uh, you didn't hear them or see them laughing amongst themselves and saying to one another, look, she thinks she's white. I got that a lot from black people. Then that was straight to my face. No, no, but have you had it from white people? No. No. I mean, perhaps all of my friends are right now thinking, like, what a fool Adria is. Look at her. Perhaps they're all thinking that. I, I doubt it, judging by the time they spend with me. I'm fairly certain that isn't true. But that's, like, that's, and that's the thing that was so frustrating to me growing up was this is how I've always talked. Um, this is how my parents sound. And people were like, you can't talk that way because you're black. And I'd be like, but it's how I talk. Like, I, if you, and even when you read stuff that I wrote when I was very, very young, it still sounds like the stuff I write today. And it's like, that's, that's just the way that I talk. And, I, and it just used to break my heart when I was a kid because I was like, they're like, no, you're wrong. You can't talk that way. I'm like, but I do. I didn't study any. I didn't study. I didn't. This is just the way that I talk. And, um, and I think that's, I don't know, that makes me so sad because it's like, I feel like it, it's like, well, there's something wrong with the way that you, you're doing that because, you know, you're black, so you're not supposed to. And I, I just, I think that's really limiting. And, um, and I, I, that makes me sad. I, uh, I, I just wanted, the, the reason I asked is uh, when I was, uh, I'd say six years old, uh, there was a, uh, a white boy uh, that I uh, considered to be a friend of mine. And mm -hmm. uh, we went to the same school. And, uh, and this is the reason I asked the question. Like I said, I was <laughs> six. And I would uh, go to his house and uh, pick him up each morning. On one particular morning, I went to pick him up. And uh, his younger brother answered the door. And uh, the younger brother said, uh, Randy, uh, there's someone here to pick you up. And from the back, I heard Randy say, is it a nigger? Wow. And, and uh, Randy didn't think I heard him. Uh, but uh, at six years old, I learned a very, very, very valuable lesson that uh, on the surface, what I thought white people thought about me in front of my face was quite different from what they thought about me amongst themselves. So that's, well, that's, that's the question. No, I understand. That sounds like a horrible experience. Uh, I thought you had to hear that. But also, that was, you know, and I, I like, I don't have a, a race correlation, but I have, um, say, you know, a romantic correlation. Like, you know, I've heard a guy who I thought was really into me talk crap about me. But that doesn't mean that they all do. It means that that one guy was a jerk. I don't know. I don't know if I can swear on the air. But, like, that, that means there's something wrong with that one person. And I certainly didn't be like, well, I sure do hate men now. And, and even if, like, I've, I've had, I mean, I've had really horrible, like, horrible racist stuff happened, like, to my face, and it's awful. And, but I, I was like, well, that's, that's those people. And I don't, I don't, I just don't think everyone is that malicious. Um, I just don't think they, I don't think they are. I think there's some, some really crappy people out there in all stripes. I just don't, I just well, don't think they're all that malicious. I just wanted to, to be specific I didn't say everyone. I was simply asking if you had ever experienced a situation where white people that you knew, any of them, had mm -hmm. said something like that. So I, I never said all. Sure. Um, and I guess, sure. I mean, I guess the, the, the situation I'm thinking of is like people who I knew weren't that nice, so it wasn't that surprising to me when it came out. Um, um, specifically if they were laughing amongst themselves saying, look, she thinks she's white. That was my specific question. If they oh, no. I, I mean, I've, I've never heard that or caught wind of, with, of that from someone. No. No, specifically from white people. Not from, I have not 
No, not for not for white people. Not my. I I haven't I have not experienced that specific thing for white people. No. Okay. Um, Justice had a question. I think she wanted to ask seven two zero actually. Uh, or no? She, okay. Never mind. Sorry about that. False alarm. Uh, for she does have. Oh, I'm sorry. She does have questions. My apologies. She does have questions. Go right ahead. How did you come up with the Oreo experience? Oh, I'm not. Oh, that's a fantastic question. Thank you. Well, I wanted to I wanted to make a blog. I wanted to put my writing online, and I didn't want to put like whole scripts online, and I didn't want to do a blog that was like, here's me trying to make it in LA or something like that. And I had these this this um, group of stories I would always tell about my childhood, and people would be like, that is really funny, and you should write about that. And they were usually stories about me being told that I was incorrect because of the things that I was interested in and also was black and was interested in these things. And that's, uh, that's where it came from. Hello? Can I be uh, heard? Hello? Oh, I'm sorry. Do you, ha do you have a... When you... When you were talking about uh, like names earlier, mm -hmm. like uh, yeah, do you have problems when white people are calling you Oreo? Nobody really does, apart from the context of like the character and shows that I that I do. Um, people, I, I mean, maybe people have said it behind my back. I, I, people, no one calls me that like on the regular. Or anything to my face. Only in the in the context of like scripts I've written for for shows. Okay, thank you. That'll be all for now. Okay. Uh, four oh four. We we got you. Uh, she is hanging tough. Three forty five in the morning. Go right ahead. Oh, okay. Thanks. Um, so I I think the show has been very um constructive, and I just wanted to say that um it kind of demonstrates that in the system of global white supremacy, um, acting white is kind of the new passing for white. And um, also I want to say that you had said that um, the solutions were really complicated in getting rid of a lot of, you know, specific injustices that we have. Mm -hmm. But then you gave a very simple solution to the problem about the funding for the schools in South Los Angeles. You were like, um, oh, I mean, basically you said the answer was that uh, UCLA needs to pay appropriate taxes, and then all of these, you know, students well, it's would be able to have decent schools. That, that's a simple, that's a very simple solution. That was a one-sentence solution. Like, why should, the, why should people at UCLA be privileged on the um, disadvantage of these minority students who are doing their secondary education? That's a simple solution. And then also there's um, a case now where there, there's a Native American tribe that has $83 million being tied up in a Senate committee while at the same time they have like 100,000 acres of land which the government says they owe $3 million taxes on and um, the government is going to confiscate their land because they can't pay $3 million in taxes while they're holding up $84 million in their tax money in um, a, a Senate committee. Like, it's just, it's obvious injustices with simple solutions, and it's because there are people twisting their mustaches, like, how can we oppress um, minor people? That's my opinion. And also, um, just to say that there's another blog talk radio show called um, Indigenous Rights Movement, and um, for people who like Gus's, so you would you would also I think really find this constructive. It's Native Americans talking about how the government does them horribly all the time. They're having crazy suicide epidemics and people are dying of being freezing cold and just a, a horribly abused group of non-white people on American soil. The first Americans, you know, just being treated horribly by the system of white supremacy. And they haven't figured it out yet. I, I can't wait to call this show and let these people know they haven't figured it out it's white supremacy. They keep being like, oh, come help us. Please help us. 500 years. 
not one president has showed these people love. No one will ever show them love. Obama's doing them wrong now. You know, we just have to replace the system with justice. What What is the name of the show with the uh, the uh, Native American Indigenous folks? What's the name of the show? Indigenous Rights Movement Radio, I believe. Okay. You got to okay. check so, that out. Even if so you just type more. Indigenous, I think it's Indigenous Rights Movement Radio. But even if you just type in the word Indigenous in the Block Talk Radio search, you'll you know they're they're the only ones with that in there, and it's in their title. It'll come up. Listen to their show from November. It's amazing to hear their story because it's the same story you hear over and over and over again. It sounds like the stories you hear coming out of Africa. They've got these puppet governments that are stealing all their money and are just basically like, you know, the native faces of white supremacy. And um, it's crazy. They've got disunity and they're talking about tribalism and the, the I don't know, the Choctaws don't want to deal with the Cherokees. They're like, it's your nation. It's your business, and I'm like, people, we got to unify. We have a common global enemy, and these people are the minority. What in the world? And we're all being oppressed by the same group of people. I'm like, I want to call them and be like, listen to Gus's show. Like, if you guys <laughs> were aware that this is global racism, white supremacy, no, the American government is never going to show you love. They're never going to give you anything, you know? You're in the same, you need to ally with us black people and with the, the Latins that are, Latinos that are being oppressed by the same system, often in so similar ways that it's like, it's crazy. It like, tears me apart. It's crazy how blind will, we've been able to be about all of it. I'll make sure uh, I check their uh, broadcast. Uh, maybe we can uh, have them on the show so they can uh, share their do. experience. Um, yeah. Are you uh, working on my videos to get them on YouTube? Okay, so I haven't. I'm, I, I'm definitely wanting to still do that, and um, I guess I just have to work on it a little bit at a time. I, I started on one. You got like 80 shows now. I started on one, and um, yeah, yeah. Let's say yes. It's a, I'm gonna I'm gonna recommit to being faster about that. Okay. I, I appreciate it. I, okay, thank you very much. Yeah, the longer you wait, the show will keep rolling. By the time the end of the week, we'll be closer to 90. So the longer you wait, more of them will be piling up. But I right, thank you very right. much for, uh, okay. for the help. I appreciate it. No problem. Um, the Oreo experience. I can't take anybody off the line. My switchboard is gone, so you just have to be quiet. Uh, 720 and uh, 404, I have you. You're still on the line, so you just have to, uh, you know, mute would be great. Um our guest, OreoWriter.com, excuse me, OreoWriter, Oreo Experience, the OreoExperience.com. Um, I did want to point this out. I think this is very important. Uh, I was thinking of three parallels um, that reminds me of, of your comedy, uh, which I think is hilarious, and I think you should include the, uh, the slave masters in a tough spot after the Civil War. That's that's Jim that you got from the key. You should give us credit, like a writing credit for that joke. Hey, that's actually um, a, a good blog post. I'm sorry? I said, no, that would make actually a very good a good blog post. Give us a shout-out. Give us a shout-out. Oh. Um, I thought of the book, uh, Sarah Phillips by Andrea Lee. Um, mm -hmm. And I thought of Richard Pryor, comedian. Mm -hmm. I thought of Dave Chappelle, comedian. Mm. And I thought of the film Bamboozled uh, by Spike Lee. Gosh. Um, and the thread that I saw in all of those is obviously racism, white, or for me, anyway, obviously racism, white supremacy. <laughs> um, and I feel like, uh, it, it, particularly with the comedians and the film Bamboozled, which is a satire, they start with the definition of satire. Damon Wayans reading the Webster's definition of satire. All of them, I think, attempted to use comedy to respond to racism, white supremacy, and I think uh, I, I think you can just look at their lives. I think uh, Richard Pryor's experience married a white person. Uh, David Dave Chappelle's experience definitely a recent and very public um, yeah. episode of of a non-white person attempting to. Uh, deal with racism in a humorous way to, to tell the truth but to make it funny and uh, 
what he experienced with that and what he's ex- what he continues to experience because of that and bamboozled as well i think uh exact same thing the story about a non-white person uh damon wayne's uh character or uh, damon wayne's playing the role um attempting to be funny uh about racism and uh <laughs> where that where that leads um are you familiar um with uh richard pryor dave chappelle Bamboozle, are you familiar with those works? Do you see a parallel to your own work? Uh, and if so, uh, can you share your thoughts on that? Oh, that's really interesting. Um, I'm not as familiar with Richard Pryor as I should be as a committee and person. I am more familiar with Dave Chappelle. I've seen um, a lot more of his stuff. And I know that I've seen Bamboozle several times. Um, okay. I mean, Bamboozle is just such a hard movie to watch, and I was just like... I need to see it one more time. Um, I don't. I don't know that I'll watch it again. But um, it's interesting. I. Hmm. Pause. See, I like that. I'm, pa- I'm pausing. I am. Um, I, I. I would. I would be horrifically reticent to say like, well, I can see my work like Dave Chappelle because Dave Chappelle is extraordinarily talented and um, and a victim but, of white supremacy but um, I I oh man I'm, sorry, I'm trying to think of like I'm trying to I mean right now I'm thinking of specific sketches of, of his and seeing how they play how they would compare to stuff that I write totally certainly very similar totally I think that I've, I don't think, I feel that I've, I know that I've been able to talk about some things that, that legitimately bother me. The experience at the movies was really upsetting because it was so clear and I was like, why is this the only, okay, fine. Um, and that's, and that's been fantastic where that will all go and end. Who knows? Hopefully it won't be as tragic as Bamboozled, not to spoil that film for anyone who hasn't seen it does not end happily. And in, in in terms of getting it into a broader audience, I've I've it is it's hard. It's, I mean it's hard to get it out there. I've been working with it for a long time trying to get it distributed on, on a larger level and it and it is hard because people are like, we don't know if we want to do something this edgy or we don't really want to rock the boat that much, which I understand from a business point of view because you need to keep viewers or readers or whatever it is. Um so hopefully well, <laughs> I would I would take the part of Dave Chappelle's journey where he made the millions of dollars. The uh, leaving it all behind, I don't necessarily necessarily want to do. But it's interesting. I don't I don't know where it might go or lead. I, I think I've done a few posts recently that have been a little more serious or a little more frustrated than maybe previous posts. So that's that was kind of exciting to sort of broaden the spectrum of emotion that is perhaps exhibited on the blog. That's been very exciting. Wow. And you will see. Where it all goes. <laughs> the Oreo Experience dot com, uh, context of white supremacy, Gusty Renegade and Justice. Justice, do you have some questions you want to ask? Do you have any other websites besides the Oreo one? That are mine personally? No. That's the only one that I have. Are you going to make some more blogs? I thought about it. I thought about doing a I thought about doing a white people to the rescue blog just dedicated to all of these movies and uh really examining them and doing some 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 stuff around that and having some satirical fun at that. But we'll see. We'll see. I have other projects that have nothing to do with this. So we'll see where how it all intertwines. Okay. That'll be all for now. Um, but phrase. Where was the catchphrase? I know, I just gotta be consistent. Gotta be consistent. Thank you, Jeff. Runner. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you can you tell us where uh, folks can catch your uh, your performances uh, if you're going to be out any place uh, specifically? Uh, where can we catch you? I don't have any performances of this coming up anytime soon. Nothing is scheduled right now. But I will 
post about them when I do, or I can give you a call and let you know, and you can tell everybody. But I'm in Los Angeles, so when I do perform, it's in Los Angeles. Okay. And yeah, I'll uh, I'll keep you posted. Please do. I would uh, I would love to have you on a program with your white boyfriend <laughs> or some of your white friends, and they could be anonymous. Like I don't want to call out names. I would just love to have them on a program to talk about racism. Um, I would uh, <laughs> I would be pretty obscene in promoting the blog if I could get that one. I think people would think that would be very. You know what? I will I will put that to my friends. And I will, I will ask them. I think that could be a hoot. But you and me both, that would be uh, scintillating times two. Um, yeah, see if we can make that happen. I think that would be real constructive. Um, <laughs> the blog is, uh, I have non-white people seconding, thinking, yes, that would be constructive. Um, <laughs> the blog is fab. Stop. Love it. A lot. Uh, the Oreo Experience dot. Um, Justice has a question. Do you have a question? Oh, see, that's why you got to be professional. You need a radio program. Be professional. Um, we'll give her two seconds and she'll get her question. But that, I'll plug the blog again. The Oreo Experience dot com. Uh, she, I, I didn't even get an opportunity. Oh, I'll take time. We got time. The you, you have a post on. It's titled Oprah Throws Off the Curve, August 2009. <laughs> Can you share about this post about uh, you're saying that Oprah is making it tougher for, for the Oreo gang, please? Yes. So I wrote that in response to the movie Precious based on the novel Push by Sapphire because one of the things I talk about is like, um, you know, what, what Oreos fight against is the like images that are perpetuated in the media. So you know, th these are the images that, you know, most people see, so we fight very hard to not be that. And uh, the Precious, based on the novel Pushed by Sapphire, is another example of one of the two types of movies about black people that are sort of allowed to be distributed by the mass media. And you either get a movie like The Blind Side or you get a movie like Precious, which is an, uh, which is um, from what I understand, an excellent book, an excellent film, and it's not to disparage the filmmakers at all. Um, but it's, oh, look how horrible life is for black people. That's a terrible existence, and it's the ghetto, and it's, you know, growing up super poor and super abused and blah, blah, blah. And so in the post, I say, look, I cannot help, but I grew up middle class, and that's not my fault. I couldn't do anything about that. But I've worked really hard to, like, you know, to, 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 to be an Oreo and, and to, to – push past stereotypes, but you're making it too easy, and I've worked too hard. If all I had to do was just not be born um, in, in that situation, well, I already did that. I didn't even have to do any work for it. So come on, Oprah. Let's make, let's make some better media. Uh, Oprah Winfrey, also a uh, victim of racism, white supremacy, unfortunately. Um, again, yeah, her, the or the dollars. I'm crying for around the inside. Oh, she's she's got a lot more resources than than me too, but uh white people still uh don't treat her like she's a white person. Uh, I think I think Oprah, she it would be uh it would be correct for her to wear a t-shirt saying treat me like a white person cuz uh I have seen a lot of evidence that white people do not treat her like a white person and that has been uh, not constructive for her. Um but yeah, if if you can work on that I will. Uh, I'm on the street team. I told you I'll promote. I'll have. Uh, I'll put getting around with my friends and, and boyfriend. And I'm sorry. Getting around table with my friends and boyfriend and stuff. It could be either or. It could be you and the boyfriend. That would be fantastic. It could be uh, you and and some of your white friends. That would be uh, extraordinary. Fantastic. We would love it. It would be uh, exuberant experience. Um, I, I think a lot of non-white folks, and maybe we could do a late one too, because I like later shows. But yeah, either or, or if you want to bring them all, that would be great. I just I love talking to white people. It would be great to hear some of the white people that you're around consistently um, to hear their views on racism. So yeah, if you can make it happen, I'll put the video up. I'll put the video every site that I plug the show. I'll put the video up. So I'll be driving your blog and the video. So that's the incentive to to make this happen because I think it would be very constructive. I, I think it could be, like I said, a hoot. I think it'd be fun. 
Okay. We will, uh, I will definitely be in touch. Thank you for sharing uh, some of your uh, Tuesday evening dash Monday morning uh, with us. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, the OrioExperience.com. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. And live performance. Love the song. The song is incredible. I'm um, hoping I can play it for more people. I have it on MP3. Um, extraordinary job. Keep up the excellent work with the blog. Thank you. I appreciate it. I do. I, I appreciate it. It's been a good time. It has. I enjoyed myself. Uh, we will be in touch. Hopefully we can do it again with white people next time. <laughs> I was about to make a, a very off-color joke, and I'm going to hold that in. <laughs> <laughs> you see, the sex thing is always there. It's always there. Like, <laughs> you said do it. Why, I was just playing along. Mm, but you do have um, no, Thank you. I had a great time. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy it. <laughs> Context of white supremacy, Gus T. Renegade, and justice. Um, I, think I don't justice. know. Oh, that's right. Yes, she's here too. Oh, I thought she was. Good. She uh, was signing off to justice as well. She said your name. That's that's all. So, uh, bye. Bye. Thank you. Peace out. Um, Context of white supremacy, Gus T. Renegade, and justice. Uh, I had a great time. I don't think I have chuckled as much on a show before talking about racism. Um, <laughs> thoroughly enjoyed it. I hope I hope we can uh, get the Oreo writer back on the program with white people. That would be an uh, excellent <laughs> show. Um, I was a little nervous about the uh, about the program. I didn't know uh, how uh, non-white people were listening to the show, how they would receive it, if they would catch the humor, uh, and the accuracy, because I do think she has a lot of... Uh, truthful insight about racism, white supremacy in the blog and the jokes. Uh, some of it, it seems unintentional at times, but uh, it's, I, I think it's great. I hope we get it back at 404-720 if you all are still with us. If you uh, have any thoughts about the show, I know 720 said you didn't hear, uh, I guess, the bulk of it. You'd have to maybe catch the archives, but uh, 404, you were with us for the whole time. Um, either of you all, if you want to share your view on the program, if you're still with us. Sure. Like I said, it was a great show, um, very constructive, and I guess I'll email her too and try to put pressure on her to come on with her boyfriend. We need to get that follow up. That'd be an excellent part two. <laughs> excellent. We'll see. Excellent. Excellent. I, I I agree. I think it would be great. Um, I and, or the friends, even if the boy the boyfriend would be best. Like if I had my wish list, boyfriend would. <laughs> top of the list next <laughs> year be some of the white friends that would even and that wouldn't even be that far of a fall off like i'd still be pretty pretty excited to have uh the oreo experience with two or three of her white comrades um yeah and i think the listeners would appreciate 404 you would you would still uh think that might be a very interesting program to have her with like some of her white friends uh yeah it would definitely still be an interesting program but you know i'd give that a b compared to the A. Okay, okay, okay. Of the white lover, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and even that, I'll take a B. I'll take a B. Our team is struggling so bad at this point. Like, we get Fs every day. If I can get a B, hey, we'll take it. That's that's great. I, I suspect I could learn a lot uh, from the – particularly if she could get some of the gang from the Scattergories game. Uh, <laughs> and that might even move us up a little bit to B plus, A minus range, and we can get some of those uh, – some of those guys to come hang out. Um, did seven two zero? Did we lose you? Or are you still there? No, no, I, I'm still here. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, no. I I, I agree with you in four hundred four. I uh, I would very much look forward to uh, her having a uh, first choice her uh, lover on. Agree. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I, I agree. I would like, love that show. I think uh, as far as the show, it's uh, indeed for me, it's kind of like uh, the uh, two mask uh, comedy and tragedy. Uh, at least mm. from the little bit that I, I got, I, that's what came across clearly. And like I say, without hearing uh, so much of it, I, I still am quite confused. Um, but, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I really am. It's okay, but uh, I'm sorry for jumping in your question earlier. It's I'm late. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. sorry for jumping in your question earlier. I apologize for jumping in your question earlier. Oh no, that's that's no 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 no. It's quite all right. It's quite all right because I uh, I think we're all on the uh, on the same boat. 
Um, but uh, I think, uh, as I'm going to say, Renegade, I think uh, that uh, it does uh, one thing that comes through uh, most uh, clearly uh, for me with a little bit of the show that I've heard is uh, the confusion that uh, all of us have. That, that that is coming through loud and clear. Mm. Wow. I think everyone uh, listening uh, has said they're confused. I know I said I'm still confused about racism and white supremacy. Uh, the Oreo experience said she uh, definitely has been confused. Uh, I'm pretty certain Justice at 10 is still confused about a lot of things. And 404, uh, she hasn't got my YouTube uh, videos up, so I'm, I'm hoping she's still confused too. So we're all, yes, still confused about racism, white supremacy, and what to do about it. So, uh, yeah, I, I hope... Uh, I hope the program has not added to the confusion. As I was he's confused, so so maybe this program added to it. But he hasn't heard the whole thing, so I think he should have to reserve judgment until he's heard the whole broadcast, and then he can determine if uh, it just provided more confusion for him, which which I hope has not been the case. I hope. Uh, are you confused, 404? Has this program uh, made you more confused? No, um, it gave me more clarity, actually. Um, Clarity about yeah, I but I I I saw I saw confusion in the show, um, like I I I believe um, writer that you are, you know, not completely aware of what is going on with the white supremacy. Again, noted. Okay. Thank you. All right. And hello. 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 And and uh, Renegade, I I I I think I'm with uh, 404 in this sense that uh, uh, there was a great deal of clarity, and the clarity for me is uh, the state uh, that uh, non-white people are in. That's the clarity that the show, that the show did give. Hmm. I <laughs> I hope that's important. Um, I hope that's important. I hope that's critical information to get. Um, I, I think I, I've said that repeatedly, that I feel that non-white people have been thoroughly uh, confused and retarded, including myself, by the system of racism, white supremacy. Uh, I've said, I said, uh, I believe on the show I did last week, that's why I have a quota system. I don't have a quota system about uh, – educational background, how much money you have. My quota is I do not want very many non-white people on the program, uh, particularly in succession, um, because I've just concluded even the non-white people who have a degree or uh, some level of status still seem to be very confused about racism, white supremacy, so I would rather talk to the experts, the racists themselves. Tim Wise rather talk to the experts. Tim Wise, I'd rate him a 10 on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being... Uh, most powerful racist, Tim Wise is like 10 for me. Uh, 10 Wise is, that is, uh, when, when I talk to other non-white people about a white person and, and how skilled a racist I think that person is, uh, I always say, how close are they to Tim Wise? Very few people get that close. Uh, I'd much rather talk to the experts. Uh, Tim Wise, Thursday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 uh, p.m. Pacific. Uh, Justice was even excited about having Tim Wise on the show uh, to ask questions. So that should, uh, I don't know if it's going to be a hoot, but that should be a very interesting program Thursday. Tim Wallace making his return uh, to the cows, actually his third time uh, on the cows. Uh, so make sure you check that out. Um, yeah, I don't know. Did you, did anyone have any, uh, I guess, final thoughts? Because I know for 404, it's uh, after four in Atlanta. Does anybody have any uh, final thoughts when we get ready to uh, wrap up the program? Um, from what I heard of the show, I, I, I did enjoy it. Yeah, that's all. I think it was constructive. I do, too. Groovy. Um, hopefully it will... I'm sorry? I said that's fantastic. I had a good time. I had a great time. It's rare that we have cute non-white people on the show. It's like a first. Most of the non-white people are a little bit older. Um, thoroughly enjoyed it. We have to do it again. Um, yes. Tim Wise on Thursday. 
Tim Wise on Thursday should be fantastic. Call the show. Everybody should call the show that thinks Tim Wise is suspicious, uh, thinks Tim Wise is practicing racism, white supremacy, doing his alleged anti-racist work. Call the show. Um, yeah, I, I would love to see a swarm of non-white people uh, who feel he's racist and are not fans calling the show uh, to ask questions. Ask questions. Uh, I think that would be great. I'm um, looking forward to it. Um, and there's a show Friday. That's kind of a Dr. Harry Davidson. Uh, he'll be on the show on Friday. Non-white male, but he is a psychologist. He's written a book. Uh, somebody's trying to kill you. He's done a DVD. He talks about white supremacy. He's familiar with Dr. Francis Cress Welsing's work. He's also familiar with Neely Fuller Jr.'s work. He'll be on the show Friday morning, uh, 12 noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Pacific Friday morning, right after Tim Wise, Dr. Harry Davidson will be on the program. Um, yeah, lots of constructive stuff. Uh, Katrina Brown actually did email me today. She uh, she reneged on contacting me uh, as 720 asked. She reneged on contacting me uh, by the Tuesday following the program, but she did contact me today. I have not read the email because I was so excited about having Oreo experience on the program. I didn't check my email. Um, but I will check it and read it on Thursday for the Tim Watch Show. I'll read it and see what she says if uh, she's giving me a bag of potato chips or a MacBook Pro or, you know, whatever. We, we'll, I'll read it uh, on the Tim Watch Show. We'll see uh, what Katrina Brown, admitted racist, uh, has to say. Um, just other than your email, did you have any comments you wanted to get in? I'm not saying that. <laughs> Justice.asap at yahoo.com. Justice.asap at yahoo.com. Groovy. Uh, please support uh, Back of the Buses blog, racism-notes.blogspot.com. Please support. He did the brand new graphic on the page, racism-notes.blogspot.com, and uh, support Cree's blog as well, cree7.wordpress. Dot com. Thank you. I guess I owe this program, Bandung2. Uh, if I uh, had not been checking out his blog, I uh, probably would not have uh, heard uh, White People to the Rescue and uh, had uh, such a cool show today. Uh, his blog is – it's linked on the show page. So all you have to do is look there for Bandung2, but it's linked on the show page. Um, address for the blog, bandung2.blog. Dot co dot uk. One more time, bandung two dot blog dot co dot uk. Great information. He's a fan of Charles Mills, who was on the program, and he is a fan of the Oreo Experience. Uh, and of course, support her blog, the Oreo Experience dot com. Uh, the video is there, and great insight posts on racism, white supremacy. We will be back on Thursday. Um, thank you for tuning in to the late program. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 404, get my videos on YouTube. Thank okay, you okay. <laughs> All of them, I'm joking. Uh, not really. Get those on YouTube. We need help. We need help. We need help. Team is lagging. Yeah. But uh, I know you're a victim, so, you know, just thank you for supporting the show. Call Tuesday to get it, Tim Wise, please, if you have uh, the time and energy. Call, uh, call on, oh, excuse me, Thursday, Thursday. Call on Thursday um, to get it, Tim Wise. The show is at 730 your time. Groovy. Uh, Justice, Gus T. Renegade, and the Oreo Experience uh, signing out. Thank you, everybody, for supporting the program. We'll be back Thursday, Tim Wise, Part 2, uh, The Cows, signing out.